ladies and gentlemen welcome to another episode of the flank i'm joined by my friend my companion my fucking duel you guys already know the fucking vibe guys it's ben janusin ben how you doing today i'm doing good tom a fun thursday i thought it was friday at one point when i woke up so that wasn't great but you, you thought know, it was, it was friday what's wrong with you uh, it felt like a Friday, Tom, but apparently it was a Thursday today. Who knows? Sounds like you're smoking the papanya. You're losing your days. <laughs> you're losing your days, Ben. <laughs> What's wrong with this guy? They all, they all kind of blend together at this point. But you know what? We had some great Call of Duty matches today. Two teams going home. Bro, today was weekend. long as fuck, was it not? I felt like today took forever yeah, to there's, finish. There's, there's, some, there's some tech delays, but... This, uh, might be our late, got... this might be our latest show yet. Well, you know, hopefully it doesn't go too late because I got to wake up early tomorrow. But uh, we're going to grind, this, we're gonna grind this show out, Tom. We're going to grind this show out. We talk about the games, take some questions, you know, do our usual, uh, usual yeah, spiel well, here, usual well, shtick. Well, we definitely got a lot to talk about. I got Parasite who wants to come on and talk about some of the matches, so we'll definitely bring him on during the middle of the show. Um, but we do have a lot of great matches today. It was a long day. I'm going to be honest. It was a lot of COG, guys. I, um, I don't know yeah. about a lot of great matches, but yeah, go ahead. I thought they were great. I, I had I had, I had fun uh, watching the matches. Whether they're blowouts or not, um, you know, I thought the matches are great. It's always good to see 100 Thieves uh, play with their new guy, Hook. Yeah. Um, and, and just see Florida with the changes they're going through. And then I want to continue about, I want to continue to talk about some of the struggles that some of these teams have been having. Yeah. Um, but just a really long day, Cotton. And, and I'm going to be honest, you know, usually I get on here just jumping around, dancing like a lunatic. But I've been up early, you know, I've, I've had a, a long day with the with the girlfriend, Michaela, you guys know Michaela. We just did a cooking stream yesterday. Um, we've been having a good time, and uh, we've been watching all the games. It's just been a long day. You know what I'm saying? So I'm excited to talk about these matches, Ben, and I'm down to get right into it. Are you down, yep. Ben? Because I'm down. Yep. Let's get it going. I'm going to pull up the matches. You already know the vibes, guys. Um, <laughs> the first match of the day uh, was, uh, was a pretty good one. It was all right. You know, we kicked it off with loser's bracket. We're kicking it off with the London Royal Ravens going up against Paris Legion Ben. Ben, just give me your initial thoughts. I know you see the veto system here, uh, you know, looking at the maps and stuff like this. Is there anything that caught your eye here? Nah, as you go ahead and close that more videos out up there. Uh, not really like that much really in it. I thought this is a pretty straightforward set. You're going to always see a lot of check when these two teams play. Uh, and ultimately, Tom, I, I think, you know, London's been pretty decent in form. They look good against the Group B teams. Uh, Paris, on the other hand, has had their struggles. Uh, especially in in S and D, and they look decent in search in this series. But the respawns, I I still feel like I don't know if you feel the same way, Tom. That they're just still not on the same page as a team, uh, not hitting the right routes. Just the coordination seems a little bit off. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're gonna walk away with 11th, 12th today, and uh, it'd be in a really tough spot going forward. They're gonna need a really big performance in the next uh, two stages if they want to make champs. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, there's just something about Paris that it's just not clicking. It's weird because they had fire and they were looking pretty good. They they weren't executing that much and they weren't having the best placings that they wanted with fire. But at the same time, they were taking good teams to the distance and they were still getting W's. And fire was struggling. And now you you know you replace fire, you bring in Temp, right? Who who's not who hasn't been bad for them. Um, he's been completely fine. I got people yelling at me to move the cam. I got you right now. I'll move it for you guys. Hey, Everybody, calm up. down. Um, I got Parasite poking me right now to move the cam. I got you guys, man. I apologize for the, for the fucked up yeah, camera. But let, me, let me just take over for a sec. So Go ahead, in take over. To this, in regards to this specific map, so one thing I noticed was, and if we, as we watch this through, you'll see that Classic is the only person running a sub on this map. Uh -huh. They ran three ARs. Uh, Paris, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. Like, if uh, we talked about how, like, the three AR setups, like, if you're front running a team and your setup is great, but if you're trying to break stuff with three ARs, it's really I mean, tough. I personally think that's Fugues. Three ARs is well, weird. They got zero, like, zero P1 time, which I, I'm not surprised because that deal is impossible to break with three ARs. I mean, I, I just think with three ARs, it's just, it's yeah. hard to, to hit those routes and those timings. Yeah. Like, it's hard to get map control, it's hard to hit those rotations. You're just moving too slow. You definitely need another sub on the map. At least I think so. Listen, I haven't. These pro players, they, they know what they're doing. But is this the only team? I think this is the only team I've seen do this. Has another team took out three ARs here? Maybe on a hill or two. But did they have three ARs out for majority of this map? From what I could tell, they had out pretty much all the time. Which is, I, that's fucking Fugues, Ben. I don't know what they're doing, honestly. I don't, I'm not too sure what they're thinking. But let's go into an Astro Gaming listening with London Royal Ravens. Let's see how they sound, guys. Yeah, we flashed, we flashed. 
Okay, I'm taking it. 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 Oh, I just actually skipped ahead. You're good. Uh, Don't worry about it. Great comms, their, Ben. Their, their comms have gotten a lot better since we've started really listening with this team. Uh -huh. uh, I, I felt like before they, their comms were like a little iffy sometimes, but I feel like they're just kind of like getting more comfortable as a team. Um, they sounded great really kinda, to me. Just really kind of easing in to the vibe you want. I feel like the... Um, as I try to fix the video, guys, here one second. You're good. I'll take uh, it over. I'm uh, a little confused as what's going on with, with London because I saw some of the tweets going down between Zed and Paul X, and I'm just very confused as to what happened with that because they seem like they're common real good here. They seem like they're they're in good energy. I, I don't know if those tweets were a troll or not because the only reason why I'm saying this is because a lot of people were telling me about it, telling me to bring it up on the show. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not really too sure what went on with those tweets. I don't know if you guys saw the tweets that I'm, I'm talking about. Oh, we got Zed in the chat saying that the, the, just messing around. Boys are a love and life. Oh, okay. Bet, bet, bet. You guys, bro, no bullshit, Zed. I thought you guys were serious. Out, everyone. Yeah, yeah, you scared the fuck out of like, me. Damn, their team is like, well, there's no way, bro. Their vibes are good. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you have it. Live on the flank, guys. Zed came in the chat and he said that uh, that they get were just vibing, the just, just trolling. Let's get a wet. And then on top of that, now that Zed's in the chat, I was just about to get Zed because I love the listening. I love his yeah. comms. A lot of small talk. I like how he was controlling the streak usage trying to let them know that he he hit a route you know use your streak they're tr they're trying to use their streaks to break that next two they held almost every rotation they're they're 235 to 83 right now on the scoreboard i mean london just came out and just absolutely smoked paris's first map then yeah i think we'll we'll skip the s and d because it pretty much ends here on the next hill uh and it was a you know actually i'll say for the next map tom was uh, finally an S and D went out of Paris. This map went pretty much the distance. It was pretty back and forth. Uh -huh. I'm gonna skip the first couple rounds, guys. I want to kind of try to set the narrative for how this map kind of played out. We also have a lot of matches today, guys. So please, yeah. in the chat, I know you guys are always talking about talk about this, talk about that. And you want us to talk about every little fucking thing. But listen, we got four matches to talk about today, plus predictions and questions and a whole bunch of stuff we gotta get through. So I uh, we, we apologize. You know, we definitely wanna wanna get this show going, free flowing. Uh, we want to talk about the most important things. And I know Ben's uh, written down a lot of stuff in his little notebook. Um, but listen, guys, Ben has a little tiny notebook. He writes a lot of notes and stuff. Well, it's it's a it's a Google shade. Shout out Easy Mac. But... Oh, okay. I thought you carried a little I, notebook in your back pocket. I don't got any notebooks. I Tom, you know, there's a situation a couple weeks ago where I had to sign a document. You know, when I was getting my vaccine. You have to fill out a form. Uh -huh. And I had straight up like one pen in my entire apartment. Yeah, had one, one pen. One, one pen. You see, I Ben, only... I actually talked about this the other
over the course of a couple of rounds. He actually ends up just getting his artillery in the last round. Uh, From this point on, Tom, these next couple of rounds, I think there's a couple of talking points here. Yeah. Uh, the first one's kind of in this situation. As you guys watch this play out with London, Shawnee gets picked. And I felt like London got in a weird 50-50 here. Like, they kind of sat and didn't plant bomb for a while mm-hmm. and kind of gave themselves bad timing. I know it's kind of a tough situation. They're not really, like, sure whether they should get this bomb down right away because then you risk of one guy who's got his gunny up in, in B and maybe they're trying to figure out where this last guy is. And I don't know if uh, they hear Donnie kind of stomping around. But ultimately, they don't get the bomb down here for, like, 30 or 40 seconds. Mm-hmm. It ends up being a pretty easy retake for Paris. Yeah, I mean, that's just the same problem I always talk about on teams on playing offensive S&D. They just wait too long to, to make a move or to get this bomb down. And I understand London, you know, they're pinned in that B-bomb sign. They think somebody from Paris is going to make a move. But then what are you going to do? You're just going to wait to the last second, and then you make your move? Because at that point, you're way too predictable. And yes, it could work if you absolutely fry them or somehow get away with it. The other team makes a mistake. But for the most part... I mean, you gotta be you, you gotta be putting that gas pedal down, Ben, on the offensive side yeah. because you got your time limit is, is your friend, and if, if that time limit goes all the way down and you run out of time, you're forced to make a play, and you're just gonna run right into the faces of Paris, and that's exactly what happened. Paris, they they let the time trickle down. They knew exactly where they were, and they swarmed in on that site from every direction. And and London, they collapsed. Yep, and so we'll watch this uh, ninth round. This actually came down to a one v one. Um, some really good plays out of London. They ultimately win this round. They'll lose the next one. Um, but Paul does a good job. He actually gets initial pick here, getting good timing on the escalators push. Um, but on the, the side of Paris, I think they show some good composure here in the TV3 to kind of make this a pretty interesting uh, round. Um, Tom, ultimately, I think my takeaway from this map, we've seen London's prowess on this map. I think they're pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's nice to see Paris, the one silver lining for them, if they're going to take one away from this weekend as they finally did win an SND. That's a game they're going to have to get better at in a lot of these series. Respawn's going to be tough for them. Yep. It's a lot of teams matchup-wise, so they got to get better at search and try and get more advantage, more win conditions in these series. Yeah, I mean, we talk about how important SND really is, right, guys? I mean, SND wins you championships. It's a swing mode. If you lose the first map, you could tie it up at one. If you lose the first map... Or if you win the first map, you can go up 2-0 by winning that second map. It's just it's just such a big game mode. And then if worse comes to worse, you go last map, you're ending off on that S&D. So you definitely want to see some of these teams really try and perfect that game mode and maybe put in some more time. Um, but but I agree with you, Ben. I think Paris, uh, you know, they could take that from this weekend, the S&D, but they still got a lot of work to do, Ben. They definitely a lot, a lot, a lot of, work of work to do, to do especially in respawn. I, I think their map pool is tiny. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've really struggled in control. Uh, with this team, they won, I believe, at this point, one control all of stage three, which is not great. It was against Florida on raid. Yep. Um, they got a lot of wor- a lot of work to do, Tom. And again, their margin for error is tiny. Uh, they basically got to get first or second in the next two stages if they want to have a chance to go to champs. Yep. It's um, uh, guys, time is time is dwindling. It, it's fucking dwindling. You know what I'm saying? We're getting to that point point of the year now where where teams really need to pick up the fucking pace, guys. If they're not looking good, they need to make sure that they get their shit together before it's too late. Because a lot of these teams are not even going to make it to champs. And I feel like that's the goal of the year is like to do the best you can throughout the year. Try and win some events. But at the end of the day, everybody's looking at the big one. Everybody's trying to make it to the big one. Um, and, and I feel like that's all the fans fucking care about at the end of the year is who the hell won champs. Yep. So it's like, listen, some of these teams really got to get it together. And I see a lot of people in the chat saying free tank. And everybody's like, who the fuck is tank? Who is tank? Guys, Scraps is tank. He plays GTA with us. His character on GTA is Bald Terry. And his nickname is tank. So we call him tank on the streets of GTA, guys. So if you see a lot of people in the, in the chats uh, spamming tank, they're talking about Scraps. Um, Just a little uh, heads up there, Ben. I got to make it so, clear. Chat's yep. going crazy. So for viewers at home, we're gonna we're gonna watch the fifth round of this control. I'll be honest, the first four rounds of this control were an absolute snooze fest, Tom. So was this almost, the whole map was a I snooze had, fest? It was just actually, defense after defense. Bro, I actually went to my fridge and got a Red Bull at some point around round three. I was like, I mean, I, I need to stay awake for the rest of this series. Man. I mean, let's just say how it is. I mean, it's just defensive heavy. I feel like these yeah. both these teams are just not that great on the offensive side right now. Um, either that or both teams are just very good on the defensive side, but there was just not an offensive side one, if I remember correctly, Ben. Um, yeah, and it just went very back and Paris forth. They had an opportunity on one of their offenses to like cap A, and they kind of tossed it. But in the essence of time, guys, we're going to skip through that and just kind of watch this last round here. And ultimately, London, who I, I thought, had, had, again, been really solid to respawn. 
with this core four recently do a good job kind of clutching up they end up getting a couple ticks on offense to kind of set themselves up to get defense uh -huh. and this last round they take advantage and they go ahead and take a 2-1 uh lead in the series yeah and, and going up 2-1 is is big Ma maddie unlucky right there he tried to reload but yeah. it, it collapsed it fell apart but just a good job by uh by london here to just shut down paris and is controlling the clutch up here in overtime and to push this to a map number four i agree with you ben this this map was a fucking snooze fest it was, I was it was pretty soon. I was brother. sitting there. I was sitting there watching with my girlfriend. I said, "Model, oh, this fucking shit's boring because it's just so defensive heavy." I just want to see some of these matches go down to the wire. And yes, it did go to overtime, but I just I just knew the defensive team was gonna win based off how the map was going. So we go into a fourth map, and again, you find ourselves on another checkmate. Ben, I feel like a lot of people love this map. I feel like there's checkmate is always being played in every series, but we go into a checkmate hard point to finish things off on this fourth map. And and London, they come out and do what they do, Ben. Yeah, I think we're going to get a listen here in here with Paris shortly. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think London went out to a pretty big lead and they were able to hold it after the next couple of hills. Yep. Let's go into the Astro game and listen in with Paris, see how they're common. You saw a shadow top left wing. He just hey, popped top up. Left, top left. Top left. Dead. Nice. Okay, nice. Yo, one's that left wing. Point, I think. I'm Trevin. You can kill them. All right. Yeah, all right. One's with steps and one's pillar. Last two. With steps and pillar. Nice. Killer. Nice. Nice. Killer. Killer's dead. What about, what about, what about Paul next week? Never flip storage, guys. Up. I'm on bullet. Two storage. I got one. One more. Dead on time. Crouching behind. Crouching behind. Crouching behind. Crouching behind. Dead. 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 Yo, Zed's making a play Tetris. He's making a play Tetris. Heads up. Zed's making a play Tetris. That's Tetris. Nice, nice, nice. Pick up right. right. I'm pushing up. Uh, no. In the window, no, no, window. Two cabin. One in the hallway. Zap, we can have it. One in the hallway. Zap, we can have it. Right side cabin. Right side cabin. I'm right behind you. Right behind you. Right side. Right side cabin. Two there. We're deep, guys. We're deep. 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 We're how about the blaze from classic? I mean, Tom, watching that, obviously their comms were decent, but like, you watch the way those last two hills played out. I think that's really sort of the issue with Paris. It's just, it doesn't seem like they take a lot of really good team chows. They're like, a lot of solo stuff. They're not working together. They're doing a lot of basics in their comms, but not a lot of advanced stuff. Not a lot of advanced teamwork bait and switches that like they're going to need to do at this level. I think they're going to figure it out as a team, but that's like their biggest struggle, at least from what I can tell in the respawn right now. I, I mean, that's the difference between some of the top teams and the teams at the bottom. It's not... Listen, granted, a lot of the teams at the top, some have, a, have some of the best talents in the world, right? But a lot of these players that are really good, like Simp and Abizi and Shotzi and, you know, anybody at the top, right? There's so many good fucking players. I can, I can name so many. But a lot of them, you know, it's not just about their talent and how straight they sh they can shoot, guys. You know, a lot of it's about how you can work off teammates, your awareness around a map, setting up good breaks, making sure you're playing smart and holding those rotations. I mean, London is just out playing pairs. I mean, they're rotating the hills. They're able to get good holds and lock down some solid time. And then hills that they're not rotating to, they're, they're very well organized when they're working on their breaks. They're making sure they're hitting routes. They're making sure they're calming and playing off one another. Guys, if you're not playing at a team at this level... Especially, we're at another major now. This is not league matches. This is a fucking major tournament, guys. People are bringing out their fucking A game. They're bringing yep. out their A game. And if you're not, if you're not playing as a squad, it's gonna fall apart. And you're definitely not gonna get anywhere near winning an event or winning matches if you, if you guys are just making solo plays or challenging by yourselves. Now, granted, Paris does show signs of life, but I agree with you, Ben. They're all over the place. It seems like they're not on the same page. And the listening sounded okay. It sounded okay. I would like to hear a little bit more small talk. It just sounds like a lot of calling out and just kind of just going through the motions. They did, they did have a lot of energy, um, and, and that's always good to see. Definitely wasn't the worst listening I heard. Um, honestly, the worst listening I've ever heard was from Toronto Ultra, and, yeah. you know, a month or two back, and now those guys are the fucking champs, and they're, and they're the ones to beat cool. coming into this major. So um, yeah. who the fuck knows? But Paris, they, they sounded okay. But I, I think the main thing is what Ben said. I think that the teamwork is just way off right now. It's way off, and... You can hear them trying to calm with each other sometimes, like Classic said once in the plane, I'm right behind you, I'm right behind you, but they just need to make sure they're playing a little bit tighter and they're working on their trades a little bit better, but I mean, what are you going to do, Ben? It's just yeah. not looking good for these guys. It's not. Yeah.
As we as we watch sort of P4 right now, P5, and London will start kind of pulling away here. Let's kind of talk next steps. We already kind of talked about the Paris team. They're going to have some tough time up now to regroup and kind of figure things out. Uh -huh. For London, I'm actually thinking they have one of the more interesting series uh, coming up. They're going to be the first match tomorrow against Minnesota, mm -hmm. a team that's really struggled in hard point recently yep. uh, with their squad. So that's a great advantage for London because we've seen their prowess and respawn. And London's had a pretty decent S&D game. We'll not be shocked at that series, and we'll get the predictions at the end of the show, but I won't be surprised if that series goes to five and it's oh, kind yeah. of a banger. That's going to be a good one because I'm going to be honest with you guys. London looks great. They look great, and it, it's not even about just the results they're having. Just watching them on the minimap and just, just watching the plays that they make, the routes that they take. The way they play off one another, it just seems like the chemistry is on point. And even in the listenings, they sounded really great. So I'm really excited to see that match tomorrow. And it's, they're not going up against an easy team. The Minnesota Rocker have been looking good as well. They showed some inconsistencies, I believe. You know, Minnesota, they've looked okay. They haven't looked the best. I think they have a lot more in the tank than what they've shown. And I think that's what the scary thing is about tomorrow. I also see TJ Haley dropping a nine-month reset in the chat. So shout-out to my man T-Squared, bro. Got to give a shout-out. To my guy, um, we will definitely be talking about 100 Thieves here later in the show, but um, I, I agree, Ben. I think tomorrow's going to be a crazy matchup, and it's going to be a hard call, but I could definitely see it going the distance. I really can. Yeah. Guys, we have a lot of amazing matches I, tomorrow. I mean, I mean, I agree. I think Minnesota's probably the better control team. Uh, London's probably the better hard point team in terms of form right now, and it's going to basically come down to those S&Ds against these two teams, and they both had pretty good runs in that game mode. So I'm excited to watch them tee off. Uh, first tomorrow, the first matchup. Yep. You want to hop over to the next series, Tom, yes, and talk sir. about this uh, other game? Let's move it on up. Let's move it on up. This is our first losers bracket match of the day. London, they come out on top. Kind of what we expected. I, th I thought Paris might have pushed the game five, but I mean, London, they've been looking good. So shout out to the London guys. And if you're the Paris guys, you know, I, I think very highly of all you guys on the Paris team. I think you guys just need to put it together as a team. So we'll see if they can bounce back going into the next stage. But up next. We got the Los Angeles Gorillas going up against the Seattle hey, Surge. Up. Ben, your initial thoughts on the maps and the vetoes that went down today? Yeah, I mean, the only thing maybe I, I didn't like was um, sort of Garrison Hardpoint sneaking through from Seattle. I feel like they're... I, it's weird to me that Seattle's kind of lost confidence in Moscow uh, Hardpoint because I would figure with, like, their team, they would be pretty good at that. So mm -hmm. uh, that was a tough matchup. Um Ultimately, I, I, I thought the videos are pretty straightforward. Both these teams play a lot of Express SD, APOC, Hardpoint sneaking in. It wasn't that much of a surprise. CLs likes playing that map. I think ultimately watching this uh, this map play out, Tom, a mm -hmm. couple of things. On Let's get LH, to the point. Seattle suck yeah. dick. They yeah. suck. They fucking I, suck. I think Seattle. Why? It's, it, Tell it's me. hard to suss their issues right now. I don't feel like, like bullshitting today, guys. I really don't. They suck. They're terrible. Why are just, they terrible? Well, so I think it's a combo of a couple of different things going on. Mm. One is, I think uh, a couple of their key slayers, um, especially Preston, a.k.a. Um, AK Persini and Gunless, I think mm -hmm. they both have been a little bit up, down, map to map, series to series. Yep. I think the other issues, it just seems like the subs and the ARs on their team like aren't always on the same page. The roles don't I work. The roles, I don't the know if the roles don't work. don't work. The players don't work. The players don't work. The pace doesn't make any sense. It I think doesn't. the pace is just so off the reservation right now. It, it doesn't. And, and I, I yeah. told the chat before today, I'm, I'm getting straight to the fucking point today. Because I just okay. don't give a hey, fuck. I like that. Uh, we're, getting, we're getting to the end, uh, end of the season now, and I'm just tired of being nice. These guys suck. And, and the problem is, is their pacing is all off. They're all good players individually, but they're not working as a team. Um, and, and that's the main problem I, I see with a lot of teams at the bottom. Like, I feel like I just sound like a fucking, I'm saying the same thing for every fucking shit team. But it's true. The difference between the shit teams and the good teams are the teamwork. And I feel like it doesn't come down to individual talent with a lot of these guys. Um, it's a pacing issue. I feel like, the, you know, the roles on a team, the, these players just don't fit. They just don't fit. Um, and and they need to they need to make a whole new revamp to this roster if they want to make it work. Now listen, I, I can I don't listen. They got the time to do it though. It's gonna be tough. Well, yeah, that, that, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Now we're getting to that point. It's like what what do you make more fucking changes? Uh, do you just go back to the drawing board? They looked like they didn't even give a fuck when they lost today. It seemed like they didn't even give a fuck. Which yeah, that that was a little that was a little weird. But... Uh, which I know that's not the case. Uh, when listen, listen, people show their emotions in different ways, and I know all those guys on a team, and I know that I I like every single one of them. I think they're all amazing Call of Duty players individually. It's just not working as a team, and you, it it was just weird to to see some of their tweets. But then you also see people like Pristini, right? Who's very passionate. He cares a lot. It's not the whole team, but it just seemed like they just didn't really care. Um, it it, it listen. 
I, I don't know what they need to do to, to really turn this this year around. But how many matches have they won, Ben? Ben, what, what's the stat with Seattle right now? They're four and fifteen in matches this year. They're four and fifteen, and then what? Even last year, they they ended off the year really rough. I think I think they have nine wins in two years in series. If I'm someone correct me if I'm wrong on that. I don't know. And and the thing is, is I could see this team like this team has showed signs of life. Like it. Listen. It hasn't been much, but they've shown it here or there, Ben, where we've had, like, you know, we've had high hopes yeah. for them. Um, but now it's just getting to the point. It's like, come on. You know, what What the fuck? You, you expect these types of players to, to be getting some wins under their belts, and if they can't get it done as a team, then they need to switch up the whole fucking roster because it's just well, not working. But let's go into the Astro game listening with Seattle and see how they're common. It's fun here. Two top green, two top green right now. Two top green. They're going to middle. I'm back breaks. I think they're going to middle. There's, there's two top green. Another one just beat me top green. One just beat me top green. Assault, assault, really beat top green. Two top green. Two top green. Two top green. We're going to spawn on the back bricks. Nice. One more green. One is not middle. One is not middle pass. One is not middle on. Two on top top. Two on top. Two on top. Both top salute. No one. No. Chin is literally going to be inside bricks. One on top. One on top. He could be inside bricks right now. He's up. 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 I think it's one of the back of the chest for now. Might start flipping in, might start flipping. Yeah, in the back chain. Back L, back L chain, back L chain. Double T1, double T1, double T1. I'm setting this off. I don't hear anybody other than fucking Gunless. I don't hear anybody. I don't. I can't tell if Gunless is the only one trying to get these guys on the fucking same page. Now, granted, you, listen, I hear other people calling out. Dude, they're just calling out little fucking things when they get kills or they see somebody. You know, the common it's fucking shit. It's not good shit. enough, though. You gotta but all, be I, all I hear is Gunless. That's all I hear. Yeah. All I hear is Gunless trying to get these guys together, trying to get these guys on the same page. And I, I just don't know. I just don't know. It doesn't even sound right to me. Like, the listenings don't even sound right. It just sounds like they're out of it. it sounds like they're fucking out of it. You heard that listening, guys, compared to the other ones. We we just heard London right before. Those guys were twisted. Those guys are fucking... Those guys came to play. Those guys were passionate. They were bringing in a lot of fucking energy. Now, listen, I'm not saying these guys aren't trying. I'm just saying I feel like they, they're better than this. They're better than this. That's all I'm trying to say. I have high hopes for this roster. That's the only reason why I, I, I say I'm very hard on them because I, I know I know what they're capable of doing. And they're 4-15 in their last 19 matches. And then they even ended off last. I don't even want to know what their record is over the last two years. I mean, it's got to be pitiful. It's not It's not great, Tom. It and, sucks. And I, I don't just... It's hard, it's hard to pinpoint like a, a lot of the... It, key issues that you can fix are one or two changes on this team. I think I agree with you. Like they have an uphill battle for the rest of the season. They're going to just like Paris have to come out and basically win if they want to make it to top eight. And beyond that, I think this is going to be a team to watch in the off season because the big questions are who do they choose in this roster to build around? Do they start fresh? Do they try to re-sign Octane, mm. who's someone that may be sought after? Cause you know how it's going to go down with, with people on teams. Yeah. Uh, a lot of questions about this roster. And I see people roasting Joey Nubsy and Chad, I don't necessarily agree with that. I don't think there's the fuck is he gonna people, do? I don't think people understand there's not that much Joey can do about the situation that's up with the team. I think I think a lot of the criticism on him is pretty unfair to the situation. I know that from talking to players on this team and people that have had Joey be their coach historically that he puts in a lot of work, but ultimately is very difficult to control a team like this with the personalities they have and also with sort of the like work ethic that I or lack thereof that I think some of these players are putting in right now. So it's really, really hard from his perspective. It isn't really have any backups. So it's a real messed up situation, Tom. It, I listen, really it, it's, a mess, it's a messed up situation for sure. Now, listen, you can blame Joey going into the year, maybe making a different roster because even on paper, I didn't think the roster was going to work. If you if yeah, you wanted my agreed. honest opinion in the beginning of the year, I would have. I said that when they made the team in the beginning of the year, I said it's not going to work. I, I just don't think with the teams that are that are playing that the, just listen, guys. When I look at a team, yeah, it looks good, but I can when I look at a roster, I compare against every other roster. That's what I do because those are the guys that are going to be playing, and I just immediately knew that they were going to be a bottom team. Um, and I was not wrong. And Ben, we have talked about this in the beginning of the year. Yeah. Um, and th th that's the only thing you could criticize Seattle and Joey Nubsy for is just building a roster like this because I personally just didn't think it was a good roster. Um, but now it's like you can't say anything to Nubsy now um, because th there's just not much he can do right now. And like I said, I don't think this has anything to do with anybody individually on the team in terms of their talents. I think everybody on this team are, are very good individually. 
It's just not, it's not clicking for them as a team. And like Ben said, the pacing is off. And they have a lot of stuff that they need to work on. But on the other side, I do want to talk about Los Angeles Gorillas because they have been playing incredible. I think they've been playing good. They have not looked bad. Ben, they really haven't looked that bad. Obviously, I mean, they got rid of Vivid, right? They got rid of Vivid, their star player. Okay, granted, they're not looking hey, the best, right? Up. But they're not. Yeah. But they're not. First of all, I'm a big fan of Money Cheen right now because Cheen is doing his fucking thing, Ben. He's he's yeah. playing well. She, he's playing she, good. God, and I love the fucking kid. I love him. So here's all I'll say is, LAG have had three tough losses in Game Five, and I think if you talk to players on the team, they'll feel like they tossed a lot of maps in the series. I think though, what I will agree with you. I think Cheen has shown what we've always talked about that he's a plus teammate. He's going to give you 110% regardless of the team or situation he's on. And he's playing lights out COD right now. He is. And look, I think for LAG, it's going to continue to be an uphill battle for them, especially with who they're playing next. And we'll talk about that tail end of the series and their matchup tomorrow. But, uh, you know, I think their situation maybe wasn't as awful as you and I were talking about maybe a couple of weeks ago. I still think there's a little bit of lack of skill when they play top teams. But it seems like they're starting to grind these series. Uh, and if they could start to convert some of these close situations where they were struggling against the series in Florida, the series against Minnesota, the series against Dallas, they can make a run here. Uh, and they really, really need it because they're right on that borderline between 7, 8, and 9. And they need to get some points to separate themselves uh, from the teams that are kind of in that same gap. Yep. No, 100%. Um, you know, they're, they're at the bottom pack, so they need to, they need to keep on... Like I always say, Ben, the fucking gas pedal. Keep the fucking gas pedal down. And well, make they're, not, sure. they're not rock bottom right now. I think they're eight. Oh, I know. Eight I, I, right now. I know, but that that's the thing. They're eighth. They're not. They're like, ninth right like now. The, uh, they, okay, ninth. They're on the border. Yeah. They're on the border, it's and they're trying to get out of Florida. that. It's them in Florida, and Florida's about to get a decent amount of points because they won today. So, like, I think at worst they can get top six. So, LAG's got to kind of get in that mix and try and match Florida's placing this, and then going to the last two events, try and one up them, because it basically looks like it's going to be. Uh, them and Florida for 8-9. If London can get kind of a lot of points out of this one, it's going to probably be a three-horse race for one spot. Yep. It's currently how it's shaking out. I got, a, I got a tweet coming in from the Los Angeles Gorillas. It's actually a video that they tweeted out. I'm guessing after their W. I want to tune in and see how the guys sound after a big win. Yes, we could maybe. I'm not trying to be front and for Coop. I'm bringing Coop, so... Let's fucking go! I'm a fucking bad! Let's fucking get it! Go, look at Justin! Oh my god! Two! Three! Lord! <laughs> oh, he's not stopping! <laughs> how can, guys, how can you not like Jean? How can you not like this guy? He comes into every match with so much fucking energy. He 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 comes in that he replaces arguably what people called their best player vivid, right? And he comes in and he's just dropping numbers and he's bringing the passion. He's bringing the energy. He's bringing the hype. He's being a good teammate. On top of that, he's, he's showing it in the leaderboards and the stats. I mean, this is exactly what you want out of your teammate, Ben. Exactly. I agree. And, and that's a great video to watch. I would love to see more videos like that just to see people reacting after they, they win. Just because it, it shows you a little bit of, about some of these pro players and how much they really care about winning. Because, guys, these teams, they practice a lot. They, they practice a lot. I see a lot of people saying cringe. With all due respect, fuck you. Fuck you. That's the, re the people saying cringe are the people who have never done anything in their lives, the people who don't work hard, the people who don't understand how much passion, how much work goes into this. When you put your work, when you put your work into something, when you put your effort, your blood, your sweat, your tears, everything into a fucking game for years and years and years, you have sacrifices and stuff like that, and you come out and you win a big match, get the fuck up and whip your dick out and plop it on the fucking table for all I, for all I give a fuck. And then I got people in the chat saying cringe to him getting hyped. Fuck you. Fuck you. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you, bro? All right, Ben, go ahead. Yeah, so I kind of skip a little bit of this map. I want to just kind of talk about the last final round here. So we got a 2v2 situation between Seattle uh, and LAG. And my takeaway from this round is Gunless gets like the worst time of all time. Tom, do you see like he doesn't see the two guys when he ducks back in here? Huh. And then they just have, because they're not really sure, right? They were kind of stacked on B. They, had a, they felt like they were starting, the other team was starting to rotate off to A. Uh -huh. And Pierce basically just, like, think, like, do you see that, Tom? Like, split second. He doesn't see Chain. And it's tough. And so they back Timing. up. They give up, they give up the A side. They're thinking maybe these guys are trying to pitch through B. It was kind of a little mixy situation in B before this. Uh -huh. uh, and then ultimately, LAG are able to go ahead and, I believe, win this 2v2. As we'll let it uh, kind of play out from here. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely a timing. S and D is a game of seconds. I mean, respawn too. I mean, Call of Duty can be a game of seconds. Sometimes things just don't go your way. 
unfortunate timings, but Gunless, he turns away at the wrong time. Apathy's able to get this A bomb down, and LEG are able to clutch this up, but Seattle, they end up bringing this one back, don't they, Ben? Uh, I believe so. I believe we go to around 11, uh, and TL does end up kind of winning the last three rounds. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip towards, uh, after this round ends, because I want to kind of play it out. I'm going to skip over towards uh, round 10. Uh, the pretty of a crazy situation. I actually, like I said, I... Seattle's had their ups and downs. They've looked pretty good to express s &D. Seems like it kind of fits their play style as a map. Um, it's just that their map pool is like... It's tiny, Tom. And they've got to do a better job of trying to expand their map pool uh, for the next split. Because, again, they're up against the ropes and they need to get some kind of advantage in these series. Mm -hmm. No, 100%. I mean, we talk about that all the time, too. I mean, just expanding your map pool. It's just harder to play against. When, it, when you're good at multiple maps, a team can't beat you in the vetoes. So if you, if you go back to practice, start working on some of your your worst maps. I mean, we, we heard FaZe talk well, about it a little all, bit with Apocalypse and Checkmate S&D. Right okay, now, well, so yeah, I mean, they're not, not like, the record speaks for itself. Yeah, it's definitely not helpful. Yeah. So they got a lot of maps that they need to get better on. Um, but they were able to clutch up on this S&D. Um, so you do got to give them props for clutching up the s and I thought LAG could have won this one. Nuts. So, the, so Prasini pulls off a ninja defeat in this round. Yeah. Which uh, I don't... Kind of. seen... Uh, it's, kinda, a ninja yeah. it's a ninja defuse, but really at, at the same time, like, he had people looking over him. I mean, he got on the bomb right away, and he has a teammate there just stalling. They just didn't see him get on the on the site. He hit a timing. He hit a timing, and it was a great play by Persini, honestly. Um, I, I love the play. I love the unselfishness out of him to just be that one to take initiative. And Persini's always been like that. Persini's a great player when it comes to those unselfish moments and making a fucking play. Um, and that's why I really like watching Pristini play. And and like I said, guys, the, the Seattle guys have talent individually. They really do. Guys, I understand it's a ninja defuse. I understand. But I'm saying, you know, he, he snuck onto that, that site. They, and they, they play in a position where they were they had to push up to see him. Like, they play until it's safe for the bomb. Yeah, yeah. So. I, just li I just like to play. I like to play because they also had a teammate looking over him, and he just kept backing down their, the, the other players, right? So it was just a good play yeah. out of Seattle to hop on that bomb and, and have somebody look over him so so nobody can rush up on him. And, and just take him off the site. So just a good heads up play out of Seattle. They bring this to around 11, Ben. And then I saw this off the ba the break, and I was like, oh, here comes the, the battle of the, the hard counters. Yep. It's about to get some mixy. And, and ultimately, Seattle here, a bunch of stuns, a bunch of nades going out. Octane gets the first pick, and mm -hmm. they're ultimately able to trade this pretty fast, uh, as fast as around 11 as you can get. And okay, I was like, great, one and one in the series. Uh, I was thinking this was going to be a game fiver at this point. Me too. And, and then... The third map happened, and I think this is kind of where the momentum in the series uh, swung. Um, so a couple of things I've noticed about Garrison, uh, and I'm going to kind of get towards the middle of the first round here. Uh -huh. So I feel like this is a situation right here um, that I feel like the the two ARs on this map, we've seen a team like London run three subs, and I think that's advantageous because you get in this position where it's so hard to break the setup. Uh, a lot of teams Seattle. run three subs like yeah, that now. It's just, it's just like with the two, it's just so hard to get any kind of events or alley control here. It's just really tricky. Uh -huh. Ultimately, Seattle really not able to get any ticks on B here. It looks like obviously there's a little bit of lag, but they had a pretty much a free A cab off the break. Uh, and I think this was sort of a toss round from their end. Um, and ultimately, like, it kind of cascades. They do a good job in round two. We'll watch. And then we'll go straight to the third round where Gunless kind of burns a streak. And then map four, I want to kind of break that down because I feel like the end, Seattle basically just kind of trolled this one. Yeah, I mean, it's not often that you see a team out of the offensive side able to get the eight point first very quickly. And I think we, we saw, saw it a early, couple we, times we today. We saw it with Atlanta today. Yeah, yeah. we saw it with FaZe today as well. And, um, you know, we were talking about it, or at least I was talking about it a week or two ago, but we just don't see it that much. Um, so the fact that some of these teams were able to lock down A is, is good, but now they're not locking down B. They're getting A, and now they're having struggles to get B. The problem is with Garrison Control is that if you get put in that spawn trap, it's just hard to get out. It's and, brutal. And the only way you can get out is just to work as a team and try and push things out together and try and work some trades, and hopefully you get the kills. But, you, you know, when the, the, the positioning the is not on your side. Who just joined on, the gentlemen? channel? Who's that? Hey, it's Big what's P, a.k.a. Gunless. Big P, what's going on with you guys, man? Uh, I was about to say, the first round, straight Fugaze, is that Adam Assault and L, when I was about to get the kill on him, my game literally froze. Uh, like, uh, uh, here the, we the first go. round I was watching over, like, Preston when he was, like, contesting the point, I was about to kill Assault, and my game just literally froze out of nowhere. And me getting that one kill was literally important, because it would have probably made Preston stay alive long 
longer. Yeah, no, 100%. It's important. Um, I definitely saw some lag spikes during that match. I wasn't sure if we were just seeing it on our our end. So I'm glad that you actually joined in here and, and said something. I actually want to pull up your tweet right here, Big P. You said I'm on a 91 ping. Good games, LAG. Good luck in the rest. I know you're not a man of excuses. I know that's not really what you like to do. But, I mean, playing on a 90 ping must be frustrating. I'm curious. How did you end up getting on a 90 ping? Um, so like literally as we were testing like the servers and everything like that, we were supposed to test Salt Lake City literally a day before our match. And uh -huh. We were testing it. We were on like 71. I was on a 71 ping and I told them, I was like, yeah, it's randomly ping spiking every single time. Like I'm going up to 81 for some reason. Uh -huh. And they're like, and they're like, okay. And they like took in a note of that. And then like we were testing at the Denver server in the practice lab and I said, well, 81 ping. And now I'm ping spiking up to 91 for some reason. And I'm like, w what's going on here? Why am I playing on a Denver server right now? Yeah. And like the servers were just like messing up the whole time. So they ended up switching out the Denver server for another Denver server. And that Denver server somehow got even worse than the first Denver server that we played on. And I'm just like, what? How could it possibly get worse? Yeah. What the fuck? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But you tested it, and, and there was no other server for you guys to play on. No, so basically, the only server that we were allowed to play on was the Denver server that I was pinging 81 to 91 on. And I'm just sitting there, and I was, like, going through all of my internet. Everything seems perfectly fine on my side of things. And I didn't even know what to do. Like, the first two maps, I got absolutely fucking butt-blasted uh -huh. because I... It literally feels you like butt when you're... blasted Big P? They blasted yeah, you on the ass? But, yeah, butt-blasted. Absolutely butt-blasted. Fuck but like it just feels like when you're when you're playing on that high of a ping like we were playing minnesota before as our warm-up scrim and i was literally doing really good and i was actually performing really well uh -huh. and i was feeling good and i was playing on their texas internet so i was playing four fucking host uh -huh. players i was like all right i was like i was probably fine with that too because like at least i was getting a good ping and everything felt normal I get on that server i'm literally on an 81 to 91 ping and they had like a 50 to 55 ping. I was doubling their ping. Oh, shit. And you are 24 and 11 this map. Yeah. Fuck, you're talented. Which is exactly what I said was not the problem with you guys' team right now, Big P. Personally, I just feel like you guys are just a little bit off as a team. I feel like when, when the listening came on and, you know, it's, you know, I said this before you even joined the club, but I feel like you're, you're the only one trying to get things going, to be honest with you. And you don't have to say anything because I know you don't want to say anything bad or, or get into it, but unless you want to, but... I feel like the listening just speaks for itself, to be honest. Uh, I mean, yeah, I think it's just on a lot of the t a lot of the teams that I've always been on, I've always been that person to kind of lead the comms and make sure that everything's done correctly the way that we're supposed to or yeah. make sure that everything's, like, correct. But for the most part, it's kind of really hard to do that because, like, there's going to be times where, like, you're not in a position to really calm at all. You have to, like, focus up in a gunfight or, you know, you have to do something else. And, like, that's where someone else should, like, step up and, like, start doing that. But, yeah. I mean, it's something that we've been struggling on as a team for a long time now. But, no, 100%. I mean, just... So, going through the rest of this map, did you have any more lag spikes? Or was it just that one time? Uh, Which I know was a big time, a big moment in the game. But I'm, I'm curious if you guys experienced any other lag spikes throughout the map. So, like, that, that one time was, like, the only time that I, like, noticed it was, like, you know kind of wonky or like you know just randomly lagging mm -hmm. but for the most for the most part like it as i was like that's the only time that i can actually say where like holy crap it literally made a difference where one kill could have like changed like the whole round uh -huh. or even winning one offense like that like yeah. an offensive win on garrison is huge mm -hmm. no 100 percent. So, i mean an offensive win on any control is huge to be honest with you um but i also want to get props up to money chain sorry to cut you off big p but I mean, Money Chain at the end right there just went off, and I got to give credit where credit is due. Um, ben, is there a reason why you paused the game here? Is there something that you want to talk about here, big guy? Yeah, th this play ended up kind of being the difference here. <laughs> ben, give me, give me one second. I'm so sorry. I'm so fucking sorry. Guys, I see the fucking Kenny tweet. I fucking see it. Yeah, okay. we'll, we'll talk about Calm it Calm the guys. fuck down because 100 Thieves is the last match, guys. So we're going to talk about it when we get to that match. We'll talk about all the tweets. We'll talk about all the pros throwing fucking shots at each other. It is what it is, man. They all fucking throw shots at each other, and then they join the team speak, and they all suck each other off. So we'll go fucking uh, we'll go look at it. We'll go look at the, all the fucking tweets, and we'll go see what the fuck's going on. Uh, but, but Ben, speak to me. Come on. Yeah, I mean, this is a, the big play from this cam. Uh, I know we skipped over um, Pierce's streak, but ultimately this is like kind of a 4v3 situation. But Seattle kind of had them off the point. 
Uh, Destiny kind of earlier, and I actually kind of rewind here. He does end up spawning tank and actually getting a kill on Sheen sort of in the back here. And I, this is kind of a weird situation. I would have probably liked to have seen Destiny sort of flood with Hill here and try and play the time. Instead, he goes for this lights pinch. He gets kind of an interesting timing, but they turn around and, and team shoot them. You want to back it up? How far do you want me to back it up, Sheen? Mm -hmm. uh, for those of the Chin, audio Chin, you want us, you want us to get your high level real Chin? We got you, Chin. Back it up. Show, show everything yeah. that Chin's doing on the map because this guy's on another level right now. We got to give this guy all the props in the world because this guy's absolutely frying. And Chin, if you ever want to come on a show, you know you, you you you're always welcomed. You don't need a fucking invite. Just just DM me and say you want to come on, and we'll send you the information. I don't know if you got the team speak, but I just love the way you're roaming to spawn. Honestly, Chin, you're switching lanes. They can't pick up on you. They just don't know where you are. Um, you're on one side of the map, you're picking up a kill, you're moving over to the other side. You're all over the place, Gene. And all the Pierce in the spawn trap, that's tough. Yeah, I mean, Big P was going through it. I mean, there's not much that Gunless can do, honestly, when he's getting pinned yeah. in the back of his spawn like that. Um, but just Chino buying all that time just did a lot for the team, and he ran down the lives. He just ran down so many lives to Seattle that they just ran out, and all they had was two lives left. And with three seconds left on the clock, all LAG needs to do is fly into this point and use their numbers, and that's yeah, exactly I, I what they did. If Desi had chose to wrap back bricks or just maybe hold lights and try and kill the guys shooting into bricks and kind of stall for his two teammates in hell, I think they probably would have won that. Uh -huh. Again, weird play out of Desi. Like, if maybe he flies out a second earlier, he shoots two guys in the back. Just ended up being a really tough situation. They could have clutched that three before. Uh, and then we go into the fourth map, uh, and uh, LG were able to kind of close this out. Um, it was looking... Uh, I think LG actually ended up having... A lead for pretty much all but the first hill of the next map mm -hmm. um just uh i i i know that seattle uh is pretty decent in this map so it was nice to see lag come out and look pretty good in this map the record lg's record was kind of mixed i know they beat phase earlier in the stage on this but from the lag side like anything they can do to expand their map pool especially in hard point and we've seen a lot of apocalypse picks in stage three as some of the the good teams are starting to be able to kind or, or in a position where they're letting this map through in a lot of series mm. it gives lg again more win conditions and more situations where they don't have to go two three five they can get into situations here where they can win in, in four maps mm -hmm. grab two respawns in S D, or grab three respawns like they did in this series yeah who started on the good side here ben or gunless we got two uh, good guys we, in here. did you guys uh, start on the good started, side we started on the bad side for you guys started on the bad side okay so you, you guys, guys you guys picked that yeah yeah so so not that bad of a break off for you guys then if, you, if it's tied going into the, oh. the p3 hill or ba almost I mean, tied yeah for the most part i mean as we're literally rotating to this over right here we killed the guy or i killed the guy in old and tried to make just force one of them to come back to help me uh -huh. or, like help his teammate and then we obviously know only one is down here because i literally said it and then at this point it just kind of got mixy because I think Sam probably was playing way too slow right here in this situation where he should have been trying to go over to help Preston as fast as possible. Uh huh. But then he just got in a shitty situation, unfortunately, and just ended up, you know, getting challenged from three different directions. Yeah. yeah I'm going to skip through here, Pierce. I want to skip the, the listen in, Tom, because I just want to, I want to talk about some key plays. For um, sure. We break this down. So I thought one, a, there were a couple of key plays that happened, especially in the last couple of hills here. So you guys do a good job getting the early time on Turtle. Um, I noticed that octane got kind of in a weird spot here coming off the spawn like he doesn't necessarily hold his head glitch in the back mm -hmm. and ultimately he's, he's traded pretty easily here uh with not much resistance from Chin. lg kind of end up getting these back spawns and kind of setting up and getting a lot of p5 time mm -hmm. as you guys will see really good pitch for number one here Chin again making a play pitches all the way through the middle kind of kills all through the front this now, listening was incredible though deep. ben if you don't i think we yeah, should listen to it for a bit. This, no, no no rewind it to because this listening is incredible this is a yeah, great listen i want to go? listen to the whole fucking thing guys do you want to listen to the whole thing because i do i would love to listen to this again because this is, I, I really like this listening and i also see chino in the chat and he really wants to hear it so yep. let's go right. on board with la gorillas One's gonna be front. I'm looking coop. He's gonna lay down. Stay down. I fought front. I'm coming. I fought front. I'm coming. I fought front. I'm coming. 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 I'm co
Yeah, TP one back and one back. Two v two v one, two v one, two v one. I'm replacing you. I'm backing up. I'm backing up. Try to stay left here. I'm running away. I'm running away. Just one down, guys. Just one down. Try to stay left. I'm mid open. Mid open. My shoulder door. My shoulder door. I'm shoulder door. Pressing. Hold me. 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 He could cook him dirt on me. I'm watching my wall. Top TV, top TV. Yeah. Actually, I can't have low, low. Sam dead. You yeah, hold it, hold it. Drop me down, drop me down. Drop me down, JT. Dead. There you go. Nice. I'm, I'm, going for, I'm going for the I'm going for the flip. Low, low, last guy, that's the last guy, last guy. He's trying to just me. Nice. I'm going to give it back. I'm going to give it back. He's going to... Oh, I spawned in the back. Pierce, my spawn there. Nobody here, nobody here. No, okay. Third, third, third. I'm coming dirt. One's already top map. One's top map. Top TV above me. Top TV, top TV. I'm lights for now, guys. Nice. Another one. Pierce, Pierce, Pierce. Pierce, the absolute cliff. Still top TV. That's fine. Top Just TV play still. Control. Play top control TV again. Right. Top TV again, Brian. Here's time. Are you go, Shane? Here's come my back. Come on, top, top, top TV. Top TV. I'm playing corner top TV. Oh, he flanked me. He's a top TV dead. I'm ready. He ran back to P1. I'm just holding low heli right now. I'm waiting. Yeah, wait. Let's go. It's hard hit there here. They have a trophy low dirt or low P1. I got you. It could be heli. Remember, whoever's there. Oh. Just great comms from Chi and Tom. Great I mean, comms, great comms. I mean, I great comms from, from all of them. General. All yeah. of them. I mean, I, again, just going back to Chi's energy, and just the hype that he brings to the team. And then I just, I like the crossfires between him and Silly there, the way they work off one another, the way they're team shooting everything. Their comms are very clear. They're very quick. Um, It was just a great listening. It was one of my favorite listens of the tournament. And I love the patience out of the squad to just hold their setups, push up on those cuts, and just play some off angles. And yeah. it's not about them playing corners it's about the their positioning and how they can help each other no matter where they come from they always have another eye right and that, yeah. and that's the most important thing and that, again that's why i just feel like this team's playing really well right now now i want to see more consistency out of them i want to see this do this against the top teams i want to see this do i want to see them do stuff like this every single day um and if they can get consistent and they can keep doing stuff like this then i can really see this team making a run and, and making some noise ben but um, I think that's the main problem is consistency. So let, let's see if they can keep it going. But is there anything else you want to talk about? Because I know you were, you wanted yeah, to write down a play. I'll, I'll, a lot of people just really want to listen uh, listen in. I want to talk about this situation. I know Gunless you're in here and we can kind of talk it through. So you guys get kind of in a pretty interesting spot here. You're go ahead and you're holding off this big rotation. Ultimately, you get kind of teammated. <laughs> Sort of, was there like a miscommunication? Like what happened here? Um, sort of broke this So hole? basically, pressing, um, I kill one, or I like, I kill like two or three people hitting, trying to hit the right the whole time. And then Preston says, yo, I've spawned like, yeah, there's multiple hitting right. I kill one, get to like play my life. And I'm sitting on top of like, kind of like the cliff heady, I guess you could say. And I'm like forcing them to come out one and two waiting for my teammate, which Preston is coming around the back to help me. And then uh, Sam stuck me in the head yeah, and i was uh, and i was two sucks. away from i was two away from streaks as well that's the worst that's the so, fucking worst bro watch it come in uh right, that's tough right there if you want to look at the back of Gullis's yeah head. right uh, yeah you see the stucky name right there that's never good that's never good yeah. and i'm curious if we're can i ask you a question guys because you're you're in the league you're a pro player and you know i want to ask Ben as well do you see frags coming out in in s d uh no it's because in this game like in past games it's usually uh -huh. like frags are uh, way better than semtex but in this game semtex is regardless if you throw it up in the air it won't blow up until, until it hits it, the ground yeah until it hits the ground so it's just like got to get to the point where it's like is it even worth it at that point and the moment a semtex hits the ground it blows up immediately yeah i mean i guess you could say that a frag grenade you can like cook it as much as you want and try to make it and you can't immediately. stick anyone and you yeah. can't stick anyone which is the only reason why i was like i wonder with that because i just feel like I, I don't know semtexes just keep sticking how many uh, sticks have we seen from teammates? I just feel we like saw, we saw two in this game. Yeah, and when we saw one in so. the hundred thieves, right, where he stuck somebody in the back of the head, and yeah. it just happens a lot because I don't know what it is, but sometimes I see people. Remember what Preston in the Minnesota five five when he stuck Dylan, and it, it, Dylan wasn't even on his fucking screen. And, and it happened. It happened to them. In and it happened again. Well and it happened them. again. And now I'm starting to think. Listen, frags are not bad. I mean, you could cook them. You could blow them up in people's faces. You can't stick your teammates. I mean, I just don't get it. I, I, I really would like to see some of the pros try frags out. I, I think it would be pretty cool. It's just cool. that they do the same damage as the Semtex. So it's just like, it's unfortunate that like in past games, for the most part, frags usually always do more damage than Semtexes. But in this game, it's just like, there's just no point to use a frag grenade, I guess you could say. Uh -huh. Especially if how OP Semtexes are. Like imagine if I throw a Semtex cross map and it sticks someone. That's a free kill. Uh -huh. But if I throw a frag grenade across map, it ain't killing no one. Yeah, I, I I guess that's true. I don't know. 
listen, I'm a, I'm a big fan of frags. I used to run them all the time. Even back in MW in the beginning, I was running frags. And Donnie was like, put that shit away. He would start yelling at me and shit. But I look, he liked them. Like, just the way you could, you could bounce them off things. You could bank them off walls. You can get them in situations that a Semtex just can't can't get you there. Now, I, I, I like what Parasite's saying in the chat. It, Semtex is allow you to stay mobile. Because you can throw them very quickly. You don't need to worry about cooking them. But in s and I feel like that's not as much of a problem. Um, but I don't know. Um, I, I just thought it would be cool. Maybe if someone can, can bring it out and, and maybe see if they can do anything with frags. But I just thought I would throw it out there. Let's, uh, let's talk what's next for these teams. So obviously, going to see you guys are, are done here for the weekend. You'll regroup, come back for the next stage. Um, interesting matchup coming up. Uh, both losers matches tomorrow. Interesting. LAG versus Optics. Very interesting. LAG has been Optics very good. Chicago. In Optics Chicago. LAG has been very good in s and uh, respawn starting to come together could be a very interesting series depending on the maps that we get um would well, be surprised again if there's another one that may go to four or five games mm -hmm. well before we get into that one i mean gunless kind of what are the next steps between uh, you and the squad going forward um anything you guys talked about anything that anything that really stood out that you guys think you really need to work on or is just like a lot of things you just guys just got to go back to the drawing board and just trying I mean, to figure this shit out i mean it's the same thing about everything it's just like it's usually just pacing uh and communication for the most part just two things that mm -hmm. are most important yeah that's what I, that's what we said like uh everyone can like you know look at stats i mean you can rotate if i had rotation to every single hill i would literally go for 9.0 yeah yeah, yeah that's, 9 .0. yeah. that's, that's like, just the whole point if you play the game the right way it's, it's easier just, it's it's pacing it's going like one by one by one it's just like literally during that like neptune quit for example when he got the like five five one v two right uh -huh. like he they went one by one by one because it's yep. just like if you get one-on-ones are like the easiest things that you can get like that's what we practice day in and day out every single day right yep so it's just like when when they start like incorporating teamwork pacing like actually hitting stuff out together it just it it flows smoother it, it feels hey, better like and you actually start being able to think about kind of like i guess like the future i guess you could say or like you know the next deal on the next deal mm -hmm. so like it just allows just a lot more consistency out of everybody yep well uh you know i'm gonna tell you straight up big p i'm you know i'm a big fan of you i'm a big fan of your team I'm and big I, fan of you, Tom. I appreciate that big p and uh you're a good dude man i just want to see you guys do well you know what i'm saying and i know you guys have the talent and that's the only reason why i'm super hard on you guys on the show and you know I personally just think you guys suck right now. I don't think you guys suck individually. I just think as a team, you guys have a lot to work on. And I just want to see you guys turn it around. You know what I'm I mean, saying? Yeah, there's no, there's no hiding it. We do yeah, suck right now. <laughs> exactly. And that's why I fuck with you because you're a realist and you just say it how it is. So that's why I always respect you. So um, I just want to say thank you for coming on the yeah, show and, and no speaking problem. your thank mind. Thank you for having me, sir. And, uh... and you're welcome to, to stay on if you want. I'm about to drag Zinni and Parasite in here. We're about to talk to uh, talk about these next couple matches, but... Um, you're just a fucking man, Gunless, and yeah. I, I just, I, likewise, I, likewise. I wish you the best, boss, moving forward thank with you, the squad. You. Um, but I'm gonna drag Parasite in here, User I'm gonna drag Zinni in here, what's going channel. on, guys, how we doing, Come Parasite in. Zinni, what's happening, <laughs> kid, you having a good fucking Mark, day or what? Users. <laughs> Zinni, we got a Tatch coming in from the what's Minnesota up, Rocker, dropping a 52-monther to the channel, man, okay. let's get a what tat to the right chat. There. Let's get a winnie. Let's get a where. So we got Soak coming in with a big 10 bomb. I appreciate you guys showing love, man. Let's get a woke in the chat. But guys, welcome to the fucking stream. How you guys doing? Appreciate it, Tom. Obviously doing pretty well. Doing good, brother. Can I got? Can we get a link? Let's get yeah, right yeah, get, the, him, the, get him the link. Get him the link. link. Um, before we yes. talk about this next match, again, yep. like Ben was saying, we got LAG versus Optic Chicago tomorrow, and I think that one can really. I th listen. I don't know what we're gonna see tomorrow. I don't, guys. Well, I don't. Let's save. Uh, let's save the discussion for the end. I'm down. No, the four I'm fucking down. Let's get into the next match. We got uh, Atlanta Phase going up against Dallas Empire. Uh, again, I, I Ben, you could talk about the vetoes and the maps and, and stuff like that, but I got a lot to say about Dallas. I actually You've got uh, a lot to say. A lot. I actually really like the vetoes from uh, from Dallas. You know, it's tough decisions when you play against Atlanta Phase. It's like Checkmate S and D or Moscow S and D. Uh, but I think ultimately, actually, Dallas got like a decent set of maps. Obviously, any maps you mostly get against Atlanta Phase will be good for them. I like Dallas winning this series. I think honestly, both respawns, if we go right into map one, were really close. Yes, and not so much. Um, a little bit of improvement on Dallas. Maybe some extra slaying would have helped them today. But I just felt like ultimately, both respawns, individual plays from Phase were were kind of the difference in some small mistakes, especially on the last uh, Garrison map from I mean, uh, Dallas. That's, that's what Phase does best. The, their individual playmaking ability. I mean, the way. 
way the, any at any given moment any one of these players can go can go off i mean you have salium capping fucking control points literally by himself um so yeah, we'll it, get to that and we'll get to that i mean it's just fun to watch but i want to talk about dallas because they're another they're another team that just doesn't look like they're the same to me anymore they don't have that when i see dallas play i don't see that that magic that i used to see well, last year uh, well, well let's let's not sugarcoat it right now okay um i think crim's slumping a little bit stats wise uh -huh. he's either got the i don't know after today's matches but he's either got the worst or second worst kitty for well shots is the only one turning up right now yeah. is he not it, I mean, yeah, at least when i'm watching he's the best player i mean i don't i, I don't need player, to watch yeah. i don't need to watch you know or i don't need to look at stats i mean just by watching the games i can i can tell that shots he's definitely their their the best playmaker they got on the team he's the best player by far um, and, and again, this is like another Seattle situation where I don't think talent is a huge issue, but they just don't look right. They just don't look good. And yeah, yes, people look, are struggling. They, ahead, uh, in a, in a Krig meta where the Krig is obviously, I mean, it's pretty obvious. It's it it the best gun right now. It's fun. Um, their fun arms aren't playing well enough. You have Krim who's slumping a little bit, like you said, and fellow is too inconsistent. Obviously he's had some pop-off games in search, but, uh, I mean, in, in a meta like this, you need these two putting up numbers because i feel like if these two were playing more consistent and shotzi was still doing his thing we are looking at a different team right now yeah it's just weird to me we have a astro gaming listening with atlanta phase let's tune in and see how they sound and we'll get right back into the talk guys I didn't get my health, I didn't get my health. I'm blocking the back. I spawned front, I spawned front. I'm waiting 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 front. I'm yeah, I'm going to cut the listen in there because a lot of people in the chat are just saying it's too long. I mean, FaZe, they always have good listen-ins, right? Their comms are always good. They're yeah. always on point. They always come out with a lot of energy. They sound very cr uh, cracked and chaotic at times, but I feel like it's controlled chaos. I feel like they understand what they're saying, and I feel like they're doing a tough streak. I see RCs in the chat. Definitely was, uh, was a rough streak. Didn't really connect. Didn't really do much with it. Um, but I feel they like all that's... They all died as he called it. Can, can I say something? Can I say something? Listen, RJ's all pissed off because he's cutting us off. RJ, you want me to listen to the whole fucking thing? I'll listen to it. You guys sound good. What, what more do you want me to say, RJ? You sound fantastic. Uh, <laughs> you guys want to know why they sound so good? Coach RJ listen, taught him how to calm. Can we guess, Alec? This guy's been on, on oh, he's, one he's this amazing. fucking... He's incredible. Yeah. The whole team is incredible. <clears throat> Sorry, I bought... Jesus, one second. Zinni, are you okay? Is he, is he in for you again? I don't know what's going on. Show. I don't know what's going on here. You, you're falling apart, Zin. You're falling drink, apart. Drink, drink some water, brother. Listen, You'll be good. Listen, Coach RJ, he's got them he's got them in shape. All right. He's working on their comms. He's getting them going. We also got Crowder right, in the back. chat. Hey, coach of Atlanta Face. So let's get a router. Let's get a, uh, a a WJ for RJ. Um, I appreciate you guys, man. But but Ben, continue about the streak. I heard you mentioned something about the streak. But um this game got a little bit close at the end. Um, but it felt like FaZe was in full control the whole time, Ben. Yeah, we'll, we'll watch. There is a really good play from Ibiza that I think ended up kind of sealing the deal for FaZe. Um, you know, it's weird. Like, if you talk to people in this camp, they play really well in this map, FaZe, in, uh, in practice and then in matches. Things are just kind of going a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've, they played a lot in these series and ultimately come out with the victory here. Uh, again, kind of increasing sort of their surface space in their map pool. Uh, uh, was it really good respawn? I think ultimately the difference just came down to slaying at the end. Yep. Elliot, some tough maps from Krim. I think Fell ended up going double negative. Illy was was pretty even, and you, you had a good map from Shotzi. But, I, I, you know, for, for Dallas, they're going to have to find more slaying in some of these matchups. Yep. Just like as an overall thought. If they can figure that out, I like this team. But as we've talked about before, with not having Hook in the squad, their margin for error is so thin now. Yeah, and and I thought they were bringing it back here. I mean, going into the next rotation, right? They're able to lock down most of this P1. They hold spawns for P2. Yeah. Um, you know, I think do we end up seeing a do we see a lead change towards the end of this towards the end of this hill? I I know, I know a lead change comes in. Um, but just good plays by Dallas, honestly, to bring this back because I thought they were getting mopped. Um, they nobody on the on the team was positive, and now you know they're bringing it back a little bit. They end up uh, almost taking a lead change, but they they tie it up and they bring it all the way back. So things definitely yeah. got a little bit interesting here. It wasn't well, like this was a walk in the park for Phase. Yeah. Well, I want to say is so. So phase up again the last ten seconds of this hill. on this map at least. Dallas, Dallas spawn deep. I think the play that the BZ makes here, he spots both guys and he gets behind them, and this pinch play that he kind of sets up here 
It really makes Great a difference. Play. I mean, he goes on a, on a decent streak here, just killing all the guys, just just trapping them off. Like he won in the game. Back from the hill, yeah. He won and in the end game. Up getting most of this this P3 time here, and it ends up being the big difference yeah. and pulling it away. I mean, as, as much as this is a good play by Abizi, um, that's just a blunder by Empire. The reason why is because when you're playing this map, especially a lot of these hills besides P2, well, actually, you can say this for P2 too, but you want to rotate to the hill first before you rotate to other parts of the map. And the first player on Empire was actually top TV, which led to the opening that Abizi was able to find. If that player would have rotated towards the bottom of the hill, then that would have made it so this probably doesn't even happen. Or at least if he would have killed Fel uh, Fellow or Ender, whoever was over there, they yeah. would have known Abizi's there. That's yeah, they, literally they, why they, this they happened. Out, they, they filled out the lane uh, too late. Um, yeah, exactly. Ab Abizi made a play. He found a gap. He was able to get through, and he was able to pick up a few kills. And then also over here, I mean, Dallas is just pushing one by one. I mean, look, the fellows one by one. Then Shotzi comes. He, I, maybe they didn't think Abizi was gonna push this out, but yeah, at the he, same time, you know, you're playing fucking Abizi. They're probably gonna fucking push it out. Um, he so really didn't give a fuck and just yeah, ran at them. So he just didn't give a fuck. And uh, <laughs> I, I think fellow wasn't seven and sixteen. We probably see we could maybe see a different map look how close the game is granted obviously the stats don't tell you everything and obviously they were able to hold a p1 p2 rotation sort of bring them back into it mm. but uh i mean it goes back to it i mean i the think slang. in this meta you need two ars that are either consistently slaying together or at least have one like popping off mm -hmm. and, they, and they haven't really had that from from fellow he's had some good series and bad series and Crim's had a really tough stage three so far. I think Crim's a good enough player will have turned around, but I, 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 I hate help. to be a dick too, because I mean, I like Tyler. I like the team, but like, we go from a top two, top three team to a team that just looks disorganized and not as strong. Also, I don't see these players in eights anymore. Like, Crim and Ender, I don't see Do you them. See anybody playing. in eights? I haven't. When was the last time we seen a professional eights? Well, well, we've been playing the past three nights. We've had. We played like three series the past three nights, and there's That's no good. one fucking playing. See, I'm confused, and I mean, listen. <clears throat> Sorry, what do you mean we've been playing? What do you mean three series? Three series full of pro players in the yes. league? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, oh, three, really? Okay. Three so series, three well, series well, a day well, or well, three well, series I mean, over or, three days? Yes. Yes. Three series or, a day or for the past players. three days. But I mean, yeah. So there's so like me. I've been playing TJ Vivid. So we're I guess we're pros, but on the bench. Okay. I that's mean, that's the problem. That's yeah. what I'm saying though. Why? Well, I mean, where, where, are well, I mean, where are all these starters? Where are all these players? I mean, I have opinions about this. I think it's fucking pathetic. I mean, I've fallen victim to it before, where it's like you have a good day of scrims or your team is playing well. And you start making up excuses not to play. You're like, eh, I don't, I'm, I'm burnt out today, or uh, we're playing well. I don't want to build bad tendencies. E everything, all of those are excuses not to play. Like right Listen, now, I, especially if you're one of the bottom teams who's on the on the verge of not making not? champs. What the fuck? Yeah, are what you the doing? fuck? You, I see somebody in the chat phases and play eight, and they're nasty. I don't give a okay. fuck. Besides they don't need phaser the, ultra. They, besides they, phaser they ultra, that, I think that's, every but that's team the whole point. That's the whole point. Then they're nasty. They don't need to be in fucking ace. They don't need to be putting in extra time. Why would they? Why would they show people their routes and their tendencies and the things that they're doing and and just make other people better? They're already nasty. They're already at the top of the fucking league. Some of these other teams that are complete fucking horse shit. What the fuck are they doing? What are they doing? Put in some extra time. Put, listen, I was a professional player for eight years, and when I was in a slump or when our team wasn't playing well, I couldn't get off. I was just like always stressed out. I just literally, I literally couldn't get off the game. I, I just found, I felt like I had to play extra. I felt like I had to play AIDS or had to play even pubs something. or like even something. Playing league, league play, play I had to turn, yeah, I had to turn the stream. I had to do something. I had to do something. Listen, don't, and it's don't pathetic. get me wrong. League play, like it's not like playing league play is like. Oh, I'm I'm playing super high intensity practice, but you're still going through the motions. Like you're shooting your gun, you're playing the maps. Like it's a lot better than getting off and sitting on your asshole for the rest of the night and while everybody else grinds. I I just I just don't get it. I just don't get it, and it it pisses me off. I, it, listen, I was talking about this last week. I can't believe that we're not seeing. Listen, even even Zin said, listen, they played eight the so three series or whatever, but that it wasn't. There was not eight starters in that on that list. There wasn't, and it's pathetic. It's absolutely pathetic. I've never in my life see, seen eights or, or the pro scene this dead, especially with content and streams and stuff like that. I mean, nobody fucking streams. Well, nobody anything, plays extra. Nobody plays if extra. Anything, I mean, I don't know. Streaming's different because, I mean, I stand by the fact that streaming while competing full-time is not easy to do. It's very hard to get substantial hours in while competing full-time unless you're streaming scrims. Right? I'm saying like eights or league players. Oh, no, uh, no, just turn it on. Just hit the fucking when start was, button. What I was going to say is, I think this year more than ever, where four teams don't make champs, is even more incentive for every single player to be an eight. It's like last year, every team had the luxury of going to the biggest event of the year, and I, the scene was still more active. And it's, I don't know, for some reason, people aren't playing. And 
I don't understand why. And to be honest, I wasn't playing enough when I was in the pro league, but it's a mistake I'll never make again because it's, I mean, sometimes that, you know, it, you don't know what you got until it's done, gone. I mean, like I said, uh -huh. it's very easy to make excuses when you're not, uh, like when the team's playing well or you had a long day of practice, I'm tired, whatever it may be. It's very easy to fall victim to like, eh, I'll play tomorrow. I just don't feel like playing. Mm -hmm. um, but you just got to get on and start playing. Like there's some nights where I don't want to play and I get on yeah. and I play and, I, and I'm right into it. I'm calling out hard first few lives and whatever. And I'm fucking right into the game. Like you but, just got to, but, but that's the thing. I'm not, in. I'm not saying like, listen, get on every single night, go crazy, play hours on hours on hours. I'm just saying a, not even a little bit. Like not even like where where are the actually listen we don't need to go we're talking no, it's fucking pathetic. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pathetic it's pathetic yeah, yeah, yeah. it's pathetic Let's and it's, it's complacent but we can we can fucking move on for this the S and D phase come out and they absolutely slap fucking Dallas in the ass cheeks uh, I I really this this is gonna be a problem for a lot of teams like I know Atlanta we talked about this a lot in the, the first couple of weeks of this show like why are Phase not playing this map is anyone really gonna stack up against Simp and BZ and playing and what do you know Tommy start playing this map and guess what happens yeah they start slapping no the stack fuck up out. against the BZ and Simp and playing uh, and on top of that Selium had a, had a huge map too and and you know he he was holding down wing he was holding down stacks they always were losing battles against him I just think for teams it's gonna be pick your poison would you rather play phase on Moscow SD where they haven't lost or check me SD where they haven't lost yeah mm -hmm. excuse me if I'm wrong this was the auto veto for a bit right yeah. 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 See, like that, that always confused me because this map, like, granted, I, I mean, I don't think any pro will tell you this is a great SD map. It's probably one of the worst ones we have in this game. But the way it's played, you're going to know where everybody is. It's just going to be all gunfights in positions where you know where people are going to be. Why would FaZe not want to play this map? And I mean, it, just to reiterate your point, like, playing them on this map is not going to be easy because th they know where you're going to be and you have to fight these fucking lunatics and play. Yeah, and from their, from their you, POV, you just, of get, you just get rid of Miami in every series because it's the one map where you can't play your play style, and you'll square up on any of the other four maps: Raid, Express, Deckmate, or Moscow. I think their their S and D map pool is very interesting. We'll talk about when they when they play against Toronto tomorrow how we think that's going to stack up. But Let's ultimately, uh, ultimately this this phase team is just an offensive winning machine. Let's in also say, and it makes this map very easy. But let's also ahead. say getting blown out like this on this map is pathetic from Empire. I mean, this is the map where you think you'd at least guarantee a few rounds on defense. Yeah, right. This is like, so OP. Right. Yeah. Even I mean, don't get me wrong. Obviously, the offensive team can play well, good rounds and get picks. But it's like, I don't know. I feel like on a map like this, it should be a lot closer. So they says, do end up uh, oh, ahead, winning ben. this round. This is the only round they won. It ends up going out one v one between Selium and Illy. Uh, and I think uh, it seemed like Selium switched with Pestle and didn't want to like switch or reload, I guess, because he was out of out of um, ammo there. see nine. Maybe he didn't want to make any sound for Illy, who you know is an SND guy. He's going to sound whore this a bit. He should have reloaded his damn weapon. Yeah, probably should have reloaded. Kind of maybe overthought this a little bit. Uh, but ultimately, yeah, I agree. Like defensive, defensive should be pretty straightforward to win in this map. Traditionally, Dallas is good at it. And FaZe came out here and won one two three offenses like you just can't have that happen if you're dallas yeah somebody says sell lost a 1v1 but he's also fucking seven or no or seven and one or whatever the fuck with, with streaks and, and shit. on this map i mean this guy just absolutely just shut down the whole map completely he could that's yeah. my that's my son he just made it his fucking map you know what i'm saying so shout out to selling him let's get a well in the chat this guy's nine and one going into the the sixth round so that's just unbelievable plays coming out of him and again, the individual talent coming out of the phase, guys, is just showing. It's just fucking showing. And, and that's what makes this team scary, especially during major time. I mean, they just seem like they're ready to go. They're ready to well, fucking play. One other, one other point I want to make to a phase in SD is, is I think we're seeing now that the, the Tupac pickups are working well. Um, yep. They've completely turned around their SD game. You know that he's going to come in and, and bring really good game plans and hard counters and just set plays. That's probably sort of the element they were missing because you know that Tupac's going to come in and he really knows the meta. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm still shocked that they were able to pick him up as a coach. It seems like a huge mess for some other teams. Yeah. I, I, might, I might be talking out of my ass here, but if I remember correctly, was it wasn't one of the casters? I think it was Miles. Was Miles saying that Phase like went up like with like 4-0 without getting like first blood, like for those rounds? Or my my they, they got a first blood in the first round, but second, third, fourth rounds they did not get a first blood. Okay, and that just tells me there has to be some major miscommunications from Empire because you would think that. Empire, especially being really good at this map, would be able to at least close out those rounds. And then I think maybe one or two of them were offense or defenses. They lost. Uh, so uh, it was two attacking rounds and two defensive rounds. So out of the seven rounds, Dallas got four first bloods and won zero of those rounds. And the only round they won was the round where they didn't get a first blood. 
Yeah, so that's just mind blowing to me because, like I, like you guys said, this is a pretty defensive heavy map, and if you're getting a first blood on at least like one or two of those defenses, you would think that you you should be winning those rounds, and they're just they just weren't. I mean, and we have the elf in the room, Criminal Known Seven Bomb. Now, now uh, what you want to see? Now what you want to see? Porter came ideal, out, didn't jump a I kill. Mean, it happens, yeah, but yeah, it fuck. happens, but to to defend Ian, it's like. The whole team does not look like the team we once saw. They like don't. it just looks yep. complete it looks completely different. And obviously I expected them to look different without Kyler, but not to this level. Like I I feel like we we saw we saw a top 3 team go to like top 6, top 8. And it's not every day that well, one that's change. Well, that's that's why I was we'll confused. That. That's why I was confused about the change because at the end of the day, Kyler Hook might have had some problems, Crimp said check the mini map and this and that. There could have been internal problems whatever. Um, all I know is if you're a top three team, top three team, I don't see why you would change unless you're bringing in like somebody who's just like on fucking real, like a hundred thieves dropping so TJ for hook, right? Because they just felt like it was a player that they must have. Um, but, but for Dallas, it just, the, the change just didn't make any sense. They, they lost make any one sense. of their bailouts. They lost one of their bailout yep. players, and, and you now see, and they're you making see him, mistakes. And you see Hook making plays over at a hundred thieves. I mean, granted yeah. they lost, but you still see what Hook brings to the table as a player. I, I will say part of me, like... In a sense, respects the principle of like they wanted to win. Like they weren't complacent with top two, top three. They made a move that they think could help them win. Albeit, I think the entire community disagrees. It takes a lot of fucking balls to make that type of move. I think they had the right intentions, but like obviously it's not working. And I don't see a world where they don't go back to the drawing board mm -hmm. uh, unless they somehow come come back and and make a crazy run which is, is is of course possible right like you have the talent um but i don't know and well, uh, and it's not even fellow's fault either cuz i, I think not. Kyler's a good he's player. not a bad player at I all i want to reiterate i want to reiterate this again because oftentimes every fan or player or team looks for a scapegoat just because uh, s someone new to the team gets picked up, they're not performing as well, does not mean it's that player's fault, Definitely right? Not. Sometimes there's chemistry issues and yeah. the game is played different. Like, um, I always feel for players who are put in positions, so sort of like Temp on Paris, who joined a pretty a team that isn't performing. They continue not to perform, and some people may look at Donnie as like an underperformer or whatnot. I always feel for players because they sort of get flack when – there's really nothing that they can really do. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me set up a really interesting scenario now. So we talked that Optic's going to play Los Angeles Gorillas tomorrow. Dallas actually don't play at all tomorrow because they will play the winner of that series. So between Optic and Dallas, one of those teams will end up finishing top eight of this major. Wow. Thoughts on that? I mean, it, not listen, ideal. I mean, not ideal, but it doesn't surprise me. I mean, they, yeah. both both those teams haven't been playing the best. I mean, you expect, uh, like I said, I I mean, I I said it earlier in, in today, in one of my tweets. I mean, I could just see upsets happening this this major. I could just see a lot of teams falling short that people didn't think they're, they're not even, not even upsets. upsets. You're right, yeah. not even upsets. You're right. It's not even and upsets. That, and that is too. And Optic obviously has to beat LG to get there, but that is a massive momentum series for both teams. If Optic wins that series, that'll be two wins on the bounce for them after a really tough last week in the league where they end up getting a bunch of losers. And for Dallas, they need some momentum now as a team to start um, kind of trying to make this losers run so they can stay in that conversation for mm -hmm. top points in the team. You know that Toronto and New York are in a really good position now along with FaZe to get a lot of points in this major. Yeah. Both Dallas and Optic want to be in that top four conversation. So you're, you're getting in winners. Um, and right now they're they're going to leave it down the last couple of events here with their current positioning. Just to touch on this, like how you guys are saying, like there's, there's not upsets. Like there's been like this narrative going around how like this stage has been really competitive and it, it has been competitive, but it's not because every team is really good. It's because there's like three good teams that actually have their shit together. And then everyone else is a mess right yeah, now. We talked about it before. It's, I mean, it's not a coin flip, but it's definitely a toss up where the top three teams are like, okay, th these teams should win. Then it's like four, through 12 it's like well who the fuck is going to win today yeah With the exception of some teams where i mean i would say right now i think paris uh they aren't looking good so like i would probably paris, bet against Seattle, paris. probably the bottom two yeah, yeah. so uh, i would probably bet against those two going into a match which uh i mean seattle's a different conversation seattle's lack of performance is crazy to me um but conversation yeah, yeah. for but a yeah, different to time your, to your point like i outside of phase new york in Toronto. Toronto, everybody else can beat everybody else on a given day. It comes I agree. entirely down to how people are shooting. And I had thieves matches. in there. I had thieves in that same exact boat, and I don't. They don't look like the same team until their last two matches. Yeah. Look, yeah. Look, well, I mean, 
that will be talked about in a bit. But um, yeah, those three and then the rest are like, what the fuck's about to happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, let's but go I'm, back into the map where, you know, it's I'm tied up at one. Yeah, I'm going to skip ahead to the, the last round because there's a couple of defensive wins. And then I want to talk about this. This is a weird situation this round five. As we let it play out, um, curious decision making out of Dallas here. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, um, uh, actually, I think, did I skip the round where this happened? No, I did skip the last round. So let's actually talk about yeah, what happened. Yeah, in, I was going to say, round four. I'm ben, sorry. MC made one, Selly made one of the best plays of the day. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I definitely wanted to tune into that and, yeah. and see the play that Selly made because I'm also curious to just look at the mini map and see what Dallas was doing here. But Selliam on an offensive round was able to get himself on that A point just by himself. He was alone. And his whole team was, was caught in a spawn trap. And it looked like Dallas was maybe chalking up A, just trying to keep FaZe in that spawn trap. And then, uh, you know, they did try and push out Selliam, but they just couldn't kill the fucking guy. I mean, this fucking kid, he can play. And, and you know he's crafty. You know he likes to play credit angles. You know he's all over the fucking place. He's just a hard player to play against, man. No matter what cod it is, he's always going to just keep you on your toes. And he made a phenomenal play. He made a he's phenomenal kill, play. Man. He's hard to kill. And, and this is it right here. And it just looks like he's I'm, playing I'm gonna around. Go back a little bit. I'm going to go back a little bit farther. You want me to be honest? It looks like he's yeah. playing league play against the fucking world champs. It looks like he's playing fucking league play. Which yeah, is so, they, so let me set the situation because they get a little bit. They get spawn trapped a little bit off the break. And then MC's able to kind of, okay, Stallion's able to break through green here. And initially, like, they're just trying to set up for the spawn trap, and then they'll kill Stallion last, and they'll go from there. But they just kind of leave him here. And curiously, like, they don't ever really take team fights on him. It's just a bunch of different 1v1s. And yes, some of these aren't easy gunfights, but he's able to clutch up and basically cap this front by himself. Did they not? Uh, at first, it looked like they didn't even know he was on it. And then they single pushed. I mean, Dallas went, Illy well, how went do you first. Know he's on it? The, the site's flashing. That's like, what I'm saying. I, I, that's what I'm saying. It, it, I'm saying it looked like they didn't know. Like, when I'm looking at them, the arrows and shit, nobody even turned. But Fellow didn't get worked on. They just pushed one by one. Illy pushes Cell. He dies. Then Fellow goes two seconds later. He dies. I mean, all they need to do is come right there and get him off the fucking point. Then you have Illy. He could test. He tries to slide on in. Selling gets another one. He's just finessing. He gets the eight point, guys. Is your guys. body weird or is this mine? It's just you, uh, Big Waggy. Uh, do you know how to change that real quick? I'm sorry to interrupt. No, no, I really don't know, Chris. If you I don't know. To, if, you the, if you hit the gear button, you can change the quality. But Oh, gotcha. Uh, Thank you. He absolutely turns and burns uh criminal out there jumping off the map uh ultimately i, I think uh phase do actually think oh. end up winning this offense i think both teams could trade offenses back and forth oh, look, look, look at people in the chat snakey i might have actually moved oh, no. it's uh, all good. Uh, snakey I, snakey oh uh, that's a that's I, a I that's might a laggy the point where we were we were at thank so you thank you that's Bailed a laggy out. in the chat for for messing up the thing but it's I'm okay <laughs> listen i see a lot of people saying snake 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 listen you know how many fucking assholes i see on top of that green thing bobbing up and down i saw assault doing it assault was doing it today nobody said shit it's it's fucking weird to me it's weird selling him if you're watching this keep fucking bobbing up and down crowd crashing up and down matter of fact snaking, keep snaking, the snaking keep snaking who gives yeah, no, a fuck that, because that it's not it, it, listen it's not my fucking problem that people don't want to snake it, it, you know what i'm saying it, it blame the game not the fucking player Cr crouching up and down i'm not tired of this shit at all listen we've like, talked about this before yeah, already the, earlier in the argument. year people are gonna say luma i don't give a fuck listen keep fucking snaking who, who gives a shit it's in the game and unless they do something to try and fix it or whatever um you either get snaked or be snaked that's just how it is these days yeah. that's just so how it we, is as we watch sure, spam the luma or you want or wuma yeah. whatever the fuck you want I'm, I'm i'm a realist i'm saying it how it is you either snake Whoa. or be snaked and you see multiple people yeah. in the league snaking multiple multiple honestly i don't even see self snaking that much well hold on snaking's not even that prominent anymore like that they they really fix the camera exactly when it came to exactly the snaking animation exactly. crouching up and that's down the, is not snaking i'm the, not the, standing on a head glitch and just dying that's why like, I, I always i always i always hate when i see these these comments now even in the chat when i'm watching the fucking games i mean granted it's a fucking chat and it's toxic and it's full of trolls but at the end of the day i mean i see it in fucking youtube comments and twitch comments and all this shit social media like all this kid does this nation hey respect the player man you're watching fucking greatness with a lot of players, not just selling them, but a lot of fucking players. But, so, yeah, I don't, I don't we, think anybody discredits sell or anybody that yeah. snakes. Well, like pro, pl just... pro players don't, but there's definitely fans who discredit selling them, and that's without a doubt. There definitely is, and it pisses me off. So to hey, all those fans up. watching, um, and I see a lot of people spamming Luma in the chat, I don't give a fuck. You guys are just wrong. You guys are just wrong. I talk to pro players, uh, and, and they have no problem. With, well, obviously, they, they do have a problem with selling the beginning, snaking, but he wasn't the only one. And, and snaking is not something that he just does a lot of people do it and like zinni said they they it's not really that big of a problem anymore to be honest it's hell, not you're passionate about snake and tom 
Mm -mm, I am. I just, honestly, I'm just tired of seeing the kid get fucking hate every time he fucking bobs up and down. Like, just shut the fuck up by now. What the fuck is even going on anymore? I've seen so many players do that, and people don't say anything until he does it. Um, and, and I just want to say something. But, Ben, you, go ahead. I know you want to say something yeah. about the match. Let's get back into the map. We're in an overtime. The control is tied up at two. Um, this is a good chance for Dallas to try and win this map and, and try and swing this series. But, FaZe, they end up clutching up. Yeah, the streaks that sell him get are huge. I wanted to highlight this play from Shotzi. Unreal movement out of this guy. Watch watch these bounces. Gets the kill from Sully in the back. Basically, Dallas did a good job of getting Bricks control in both their last two offenses here. Ultimately, FaZe are able to kind of regain control on the back of Sully and streaks. And we'll watch how this plays out. But they, they do end up calling in the streak, getting the kills in Bricks. Sort of normalizing the situation for a bit. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I like the streak usage. Um, I feel like... I feel like we never really see people connect the streaks anymore. You got to use them in other ways. Because um, people definitely do a good job bobbing and weaving and getting out of the way of streaks. How, how many t how many times do you see people coming in and just getting a multi-kill with their streaks? It happens, but just not as often as, as you would like. Um, but it was good streak usage out of Cell to just kind of delay everything. Again, he ends up using that that barrage. He uh, he, de he delays the push from Dallas a little bit. Um it, it was just a good play from Salim, and he took over the map. He was making plays all game, um, but FaZe, they do a good job clutching up here and, and just closing out this series 3-0. And, yeah. and and Dallas has their own own problems. I see a lot of people saying apathy tweet in the chat, but Ben, I'll let you take over while I, uh, while I take a boys, look. Boys, listen. Listen yeah. up, boys. As always, I want to thank you for having me. It's an early one for me. I got eights to play because you know me. I'm in fucking eights. Your favorite pros, they're not, but I'm in. I like um, that, Zin. Yeah, listen, I got picks uh, as well, so I'm going to have to go. I do oh, everybody's want odd, in odd flex, odd flex. Uh, I do want to, <laughs> I do want to say because I, I should have been shitting on Empire, but like the first and third map were close, closer than I'd expect. So it's not like their potential is gone. It's not like they're horseshit. I'm just saying, I, I can't help but think, could a map like map one and three look a little hey, different if they still had Kyler and that chemistry that yeah. they had before? Um, just a question that I mean, I think you have to ask. I guess we'll see. Who, who does Empire play next? Do they play the winner of oh, LAG Optic. A bit of a peppering. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think that's best case scenario for Optic. Like Optic trying to make a run, you're playing a vulnerable Dallas coming fresh off an L. Um, at the same time, obviously a big match for Empire to gain some momentum and sort of get some confidence back. Obviously, a, a, I think we all know the rivalry there. Um, so hell, should be some. We good can't matches. count out LAG. I'm pretty sure last time that um oh yeah, like let's say LAG beats Optic. Yeah, last time LAG played Optic, it went to a map five. Oh hold on, I, that's a different story. I think yeah. I think LAG has sort of this punishing style of play where if you're Optic, you can't really like ego chal and take the fights that you like to take, right? Like taking a dashi who will challenge anything. Chino or Assault are fucking dick in the dirt staring at you. Like, <laughs> like they're going to put you down. Um, hey, wake up. So we'll see. But, I mean, if, hey, if I had to pick up. a winner, um, I I would you assume we'll see again. a different optic. Like, I, I, I have a feeling that they've been in the lab. And, I mean, I hope, right? Because they're obviously uh, one of the best teams with insane potential. So uh, I guess we'll see. But LAG, they've looked great. On that note... Tony's out Wait, Zim, yeah. before you go, look at the tweet I got up. What are your thoughts? I saw it. Um, listen. I got that. I got that made, by the way, that picture. Listen, I said <laughs> it before. I'll say it again. That team was very, very good with TJ. I'm sure they will get good with Kyler. But in the, in the short term, not a good move. Uh, I see what they were trying to do long term. Obviously, you have Hook. You have Kenny to build long term. That's what I assume. Uh, also, I think Kenny met playing time by that. Yeah, which, that's right by PT. Which I think is horseshit. Uh, the honeymoon period is incredible for COD. Um, so I don't think that's a valid... Uh, you, you're replacing one SMG for another. It's not like you're changing an entire system. Um, it's obviously a bit of a change, but I don't think that's... Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think Hook for TJ is like, oh, we haven't had enough playtime. Like, yeah, it's there, but it's still like, you're still thieves. You still have that roster. What? <laughs> what? Nothing. I saw that you retweeted this tweet and unretweeted. Why is that? No, I didn't retweet and unretweet. I I, I tweeted my own tweet. I tweeted oh. a bottle of Elmer's glue and I said <laughs> TJ Haley question mark. But but it was before the series was over. And obviously I'm boys with Teach. I'm like, oh my god, fuck! I made this jinx at all. Yeah. Let me delete. Yeah, no, that, that was a good tweet. I didn't know you deleted that. What's I didn't a, know you should have kept it up. Let's get back on topic, Tom. There was one play I missed. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having us, guys. No yeah, yeah take thanks care, guys. Have fun at eights. I'm happy to see you guys Why playing. Why am I dumb? Why am I being called fucking dumb? I don't know. They do that a lot. Oh, he's saying Jerry has no play time. 
Yeah, yeah what the fuck? Right. Yeah, 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 that's what I, that's why that, Zinny, that's why I said huh. That's why I said what? Oh, I didn't know what you were on about. I didn't know what you were on right. about. That's not right. Um it, it's not right. Kenny absolutely shut up down. Uh but the, 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 for some reason Ben keeps fucking poking me to pull up this tweet. A busy well, shit on people, it, Ben. What do you people, want? People in the chat want us to show it. We missed boys, it. Boys, as so. always, my boys. Uh, Zinny, go, later, have, a good day. have a good no, day. Have a good day, Zinny. Have a good day, guys. I'll be tuning in after. As always, as always, uh listen. My boys, right? Uh Love what you're doing over here, man. Keep killing. If you got a Twitch Thank Prime sub, use it here. Thank you, uh, Have a good night, It's always a pleasure. Have a good night, Zen. So have a good night. All right, Tom. Let's uh, let's hop over to the Thieves series. Let's let's, let's finish up here. Yeah, yeah, guys. Uh, ben told me to bring channel. up this clip. Uh, a BZ actually you're gonna, shit you're on Crimson. Play, you're gonna play four times. Just just switch off. Okay, okay. Yeah. Sounds good. I mean, you were the one who kept poking me, saying yeah, to people, play the people, fucking the, people thing. People in the chat kept poking me to put it on, so we put it on, man. People in the chat are poking you. I didn't know people in the chat can poke you in TeamSpeak, Ben. All of a sudden, the whole chat's in TeamSpeak. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's let's talk about this series. Wait, I got a few tweets that I want to bring up before you get into the series. Obviously. No, no. Can I can I just Give a top yeah, on the series ahead. and then you can go on that. Okay. So uh I thought that this veto process was like pretty straightforward. Um would like to see Florida start playing Apocalypse a little more, but I understand kind of why they're staying away from it. Mm -hmm. Um we saw a double checkmate, which is not surprising with these teams. And ultimately I think the series is a lot closer than a three one result uh will show. Uh yeah, and, and that's why I was actually gonna bring up a tweet that I saw from uh uh JCAP. I believe it was. And uh, here it is. First, he comes out and he says, man, some of the takes I read about COD make me feel like people don't actually watch. Same. I, I agree with him. Or just don't understand what they're watching. Um, and then he goes on to say, he quote tweeted that tweet and said, let me say this more clearly while I'm annoyed. Our series was determined by 51 points total in two hard points. Our round 11 S&D and a round five control. If you watch a series like that and think that a few one-on-one -on -one gunfights is ever why a team lost, you simply do not understand, and you should block me. You heard it here first. Jacob said to fucking block him if you don't like what he's saying. Ben, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, I, agree I, gotta, agree with, I gotta agree with Cap. Uh, this first map was really close, and we'll get to the plays that Neptune makes in this map. In the S&D, it comes down to round 11 where Neptune 1v2s in this situation, he probably shouldn't have won. And I felt like on the control... The thieves kind of threw the first round. Um, they have kind of bringing it back to round five by taking the fourth round, and then uh, they were able to win the round five. Uh, but especially then on the last map, Tom, I felt like thieves just didn't take advantage of some early rotations, got broken, and lost uh, map four to Florida. Yep, I mean this to kick things off here and checkmate hard point um, first map. 100 Thieves, they come out firing on all cylinders. And I'm thinking yeah, today's nice going to be a good day. 70 lead. Like uh -huh. We see a lot of teams running up. Yep, they chained a, a couple of the first couple. They chained the first couple of hills. They're able to build themselves a good lead. They're able to get into this P3 as well, make it mixy, um, and keep building on that lead. But Florida, they really take off on the second half of this game, Ben. Especially Neptune at the end of it. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. There's a listen coming up with these. We'll, we'll take care of that, and we'll watch the last couple of hills here. Yeah, I'm down. Let's go on board with, uh, with the listening with 100 Thieves. I, I don't know where it is. Um, it's, in, it's in a few seconds. Uh, but once it pops up, we'll get it on the road. But definitely excited to see Florida move forward and, and see what they can do. Um, but Ben, fast forward this, and I'll, I'll get the listening going. Here we go. Astro Game listening with 100 Ds. Top grade, top grade. I'm here up right now, Zach. Okay. Two, one guy's close. Yeah, 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 yeah. One guy's close. All right, listen. Make sure you go to the other house. I got the other Yep, give me a little plan. I'm going to go. Stay up. Stay up. I don't yeah. know. How are you, man? I'll see this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. White crate. This is Neptune. Watch out the stairs. Watch out. Wait, can you watch out? Close myself away. Man, there's stairs. There's stairs. I flash him, playing. One guy's yeah. probably back right on me. Hey, you. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm going back. Nasa. Are you playing yeah, on yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going right with him. Yeah, help me play, Carlos. I'm waiting for you. Okay, I'm coming up. I'm coming up. Yeah, I'm, I'm, right. Right. I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, I'm at the Low plane. Low plane. He's right in front of you. Still low plane. Still low plane. I don't see anything. Low plane. Awakening. Absolute low plane. Absolute low plane. He's low plane. Low plane. Going to attack. He's back right. Back right. What's left? What's left? Yo, top left. Yo, top left. Yeah, yeah. Yo, top left. 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 Yo, top left
I have help, I have help. Could be, could be, could be. Uh, I found out. Guy, I could be, be right. right. Could be right, yeah. Yeah, could be right. Hey, oh, Tommy, yeah, I can't 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 I can't
100 Thieves, they did make a lot of little mistakes today. And I think going back to what J-Cap said, I mean, with all the small mistakes that they did make, look at the score. Look, at, they didn't lose by a lot. Like, this was a very competitive series, guys. Very competitive. I know it didn't go uh, last map, but um, just a really good series coming out of 100 Thieves. Um, and Florida. These are two really good teams going at it. And uh, I'm really curious to see how these teams continue to play because 100 Thieves is not out of it yet. They're still playing. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it all goes moving forward. But Ben, what do you want to talk about in this uh, Express S&D? I'm going to skip a couple of rounds in. We're going to go over to the ninth round. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just want to highlight, I really just enjoy watching how Florida plays this map. They do a good job of balancing uh, aggressive plays and some passive play calls. They do a good job with their mid round calls here and individual plays. I've, I've, you know, been waiting for Florida to kind of stabilize their S and D. We saw at times that they were decent. Mind you, a lot of that success was on checkmate when they had slacked. Uh, love to see them kind of play express more and get, and get better at this map. Because again, as we've talked about with this pack of teams from four to 12, what's going to separate these teams is prowess in two or three game modes. And right now, most of the teams can beat each other in S&D. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see if Florida, as this major progresses, and we go into stage four, if they can kind of continue to get better at this game mode. Yeah, we actually have Mama Tats in the chat dropping a weight shot in the chat. So shout out to Kim. Um, if those of you who don't know Kim, a.k.a. Attach's mom, Attach from Minnesota Rocker, she's incredible, man. She's a, she's a very nice lady. So let's drop, a, let's drop a W for Mama Attach in the, in the chat, man. Um, thank you for tuning in, Kim. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah... This, uh, what was this, round number nine, who ends up falling? Florida, they really push towards this B side of the map. They're able to take down a couple kills, they, make they it a 4v2 a, situation. They rotate Tom. Like, mm -hmm. they do a really good job Great of sussing job. out that there was, there was people in mix at A. They rotate over, they get the bomb down, uh, and they're good quickly, to go. Quickly, too. Very quickly. I mean, yeah, they're, 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 they're breaking ankles. They're back and forth. That's, you, what, that's what you want to do on the offensive side. We say time and time again, make sure you're rotating sides. Make sure, you, make sure you keep the defensive team on your toes. You want to make sure the defensive team has no idea what you're doing. Because if you're too predictable, you're going to get taken down. But they end up going up 5-4. And then 100 Thieves, they bounce back quick, Ben, and bring yeah. this to around 11. They bang out this B site. Kenny and Venom pick up a couple kills. Three go down. And just like that, Skies is on his own within 10 seconds. Yeah, we've, we've seen this a lot. We feel like, I don't know, from your end, I see the offensive team win a lot. I know we've seen the defensive team win as well. I vividly remember when Octane got that nice 3K. Uh, a couple of uh, match days ago. Uh -huh. Ultimate Thieves forces to round 11. I'm going to kind of skip the rest of this round. Uh, we'll talk about this round 11. I'll be honest, it was a great play from Neptune this round. But as I'm going to highlight, like, I think Thieves kind of tossed this. I think they had a really good opportunity to get a trade in a 1v2. I don't know if they didn't get hit reg, if, if who kind of tried to pre-fire a little bit too hard trying to get the trade. when they knew that Neptune was, was tucked away in the corner here. But as we watch this play out, ultimately Neptune's able to get a, like a crazy 2v4 ace to go ahead and... Uh, yeah, great plays. I mean, Neptune, Neptune won, them, won them the game. Both the first two maps, I mean, Neptune just went absolutely massive at the end of it. Ben, you've been saying ultimately a lot today. Is that your new word? Is that instead of wobbly, you're going over to ultimately now? No, I don't know. It's just, it's just in the vocab. It's today, just in the today. vocab today. This is no problem. It's no fucking problem. Uh, but Neptune, guys, he just absolutely finesses. And, I, you know, I want to give credit to Neptune. I really do. But I also need to, to point out that 100 Thieves just played it pretty poor. Um, they, they definitely stuck together and they, and they were working trades, but they're just fights that they can't lose. Um, but you got to give props to Neptune because it's, it's just two maps in a row now where this guy just put his team up 2 0. Um, so that's exactly what you want to see coming out of the young gun. Venom is actually able to get pushed up mid map and get a first blood. Um, so it was a good play by him. He gets super aggressive real early and it, it's very ballsy in around 11, but I loved it. I love seeing Venom just hit through that mid map. He ends up picking another one up. Havoc, then, he goes a little bit rogue. Yeah. I don't know what Havoc was doing there, to be honest. He just jumps yeah, out of the train. I don't know either, but I was like in this situation right here. Right. You know, I know that, that these need to clear corners i feel like they slowed the game down this 4v2 a, maybe a little bit too much now i know neptune thing it's a trade and it's a 2v3 so here's where i think things kind of go a little bit south kenny's kind of waiting for his team to get in a position for this pinch so where i got confused is so right here kenny chalice he doesn't get the gunfight but they know that both guys are here mm -hmm. right keep that in mind as you watch the situation play out for those at home uh they get the trades draza gets one so they know 100 percent that there is one guy here and Draza, I don't know if he was out of bullets or, or not, doesn't really fire, and it sets up who the kind of chalice guy with full health, and he misses a shot. Well, he got one. And that able to clutch. Draza was shooting at the other guy. 
Um, Draza was able to pick up one before I it goes Draza, down. I'm really curious. I think Draza kills him, though, before he slides out, though. I think Draza kills him because he's he's like, you see where Skies is? Like, uh -huh. he's exposed to come around the corner. Let me see. So he, Let it so play So he kills up. him. Look at number three. He shoots him in the back, like right there. Uh-huh. Yeah, so you're now, right. Now they're, now they're sliding in together. Like, uh -huh. And ultimately, they're just not able to get this trade. I just feel like maybe Hook kind of tried to pre-fire a little bit too hard. I'm not really... We didn't really see Hook's POV, so we're not really sure kind of how he was centered here. But I think ultimately this is something that at this level it should be a pretty tradable situation. You really hate to see yeah, a team kind of get two before clutched here. Ultimately, you want to see them just pick up the yeah, pace. Okay, 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 <laughs> okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. <laughs> Ultimately here, Ben, um, you want to see them trade out Neptune there at the end. Yeah. You want to. Uh, he played a good corner. Um, I think they, I think you're right. I think they could have picked up the pace a little bit and just kept on going, but I, I don't think they played it bad. I mean, Kenny waited for his teammates. Once he saw, once Kenny saw them turn a corner, he challenged. They, he went down. Draza was able to pick up one, make it a 2v1 situation. They just got pieced up. I mean, at the end of the day, I, maybe Hook, maybe the angle was bad for him. Maybe Neptune was just tucked too deep in that corner, but Neptune just had a big win. He won a big gun fight. Let's just be honest. He's able to take down Draza. Draza doesn't see him in a corner. It comes down to Hook versus Neptune. They both know where each other are. Neptune wins the gunfight. He takes him down. So just a great play out of Neptune. It's exactly what you want to see out of a kid who we've been talking a lot about his consistencies and his potential. And to just help his team go up 2-0, the first two maps is just exactly what you want to see out of your rookie. So just big major props to Neptune, 100%. Before. And then we go into a, a raid control, Ben. Or a checkmate control. I don't know why I said raid. Checkmate control. Yeah, I'm just gonna skip through this this first round a little bit. If I remember correctly, played up pretty interesting. I'm just trying to find the moment I wanted to talk about here. Oh yeah, it was, it was sort of this came down to lives, and I felt like thieves were in a really good position. I think they were up. They were up uh, lives at some point here. It was like nine eleven. Now I, I think I think ultimately like. This just came down to a situation where Thieves got a bunch of kills in this 4v7. They were actually in like a decent spot to maybe win this. And Florida did a good job of sort of running the time down mm -hmm. uh, and, and making working the kills in their favor. Um, and also being able to, you know, put the onus on Thieves because they were stacking uh, this B point out of the plan. Yeah, I mean, once Florida comes out and they win this first round, I mean, I'm thinking that this series is over. I'm thinking it's going to be 3-0. Yeah. I was honestly impressed by 100 Thieves bouncing back in this one. And able to push this to a fourth map. But if I remember correctly, did Florida go up 2-0 in this map? I'm oh, pretty so, sure yeah. they did. And they went yeah. up 2-0 in this control. I thought they were going to put it away. But just a good bounce back out of 100 Thieves uh, that they're able to push this to a fourth map. Um, again, we, we talk a lot about the, the offensive sides on, on checkmate control. Um, we saw a map today where nobody even won an offense. But to see Florida come out and, and stack some points and really make use of their kills is exactly what we've been talking about, Ben. So it's always good to see that coming out of the guys over at the Mutineers. But... We go into a, to another round of uh, a defense for Florida. They end up going up 1-0. They, they come out. They win their defense. They go up 2. 100 Thieves, they win the they win their defense. And then it's 2-1 to one in favor of Florida. And 100 Thieves is able to win an offense. What do they do here, Ben? That really catches your eye. Uh, it's a pretty standard place to win offense. They do a good job actually working the picks and long and, and getting in a position where they stack B and make it difficult for Florida. Mm -hmm. Um and this is sort of where I thought kind of after they won this round, the next round, I thought maybe they were going to tip momentum in their favor. And we'll get to the Moscow. I feel like that's another map where Thieves should have taken advantage of the momentum they had in hand, especially in the beginning of the map. And they just kind of let some opportunity squander. Yeah, I mean, we can, we can move over to the next map. I mean, 100 Thieves, they do a good job pushing this into an overtime. Um, if I remember correctly, who had defense going into the overtime and control? Um, it uh, was so. Said, so was thieves. Yeah. Uh, okay, so all thieves really need to do was was just close out on their D's. They said they set up for the spawn trap here. I mean, it's just so hard to break out of. Yeah, it's impossible. U Ultimate Florida Not impossible, gets some, but very hard. Gets some A control, but then thieves are back in the spawn trap. Mm -hmm. uh, another round of kills, I believe, go down here. They just kind of collapse on the guys on point. And at this point, it's over right here, Tom. So we'll uh, they get a couple of kills of B, but at this point, they're set up. They're calling in streaks. It's yep. a G. So I'm gonna switch over to the Moscow. Yep. Uh, let me go. We're gonna skip a couple of of hills in here uh we'll, we'll start from uh the second hill on there's a florida lesson in on the fourth hill as well so we'll skip through the third one i think a couple of key points we'll talk about it i think a lot of the mistakes that uh these made were kind of on the fourth hill mm -hmm. on the second rotation so yep. on the eighth hill of the game and then they kind of screw up p1 a little bit 
um because they don't pick up street they rotate early mm -hmm. and then they get put in a position where they're chasing from behind they try to break p3 and venom kind of gets really unlucky trying to shoot uh awakening in the back so we'll we'll cover all those situations i think combining some of those thieves could have really had forces to a game five at least from my pov well again 100 thieves they come out in the hard point ben with a great start they yeah. go up they build themselves a good little lead um florida just stays very patient and they make sure they play the game the right way they hold their rotations they hold their setups and they're able to bring themselves back into this game. I like the way 100 Thieves is trying to set up a break here. How they're trying to push around the back, push around elbow. They had a guy slow playing front. Hook was able to come in and just pop a couple, uh, a big two piece. So I like the plays at 100 Thieves. 100 Thieves, they don't listen. And I, I really do agree with Jake Hebb's tweet because I do think that 100 Thieves did not look as bad as people are making them seem to be today. Like I thought they came out and they, and they played pretty well. Um, and granted, they're still kind of a new team. Like, they really are. They picked up Hook. The only thing that, that really bothers me is just 100 Thieves were looking really, really good with TJ. Um, and they were finally yeah. hitting for him when they made some changes. So, to break that apart kind of sucks. But, again, Hook is one of those players that people don't want to pass up on. But let's tune into uh, Florida Mutineers as we have an Astro game listening and see how they're common in this fourth map. And bust one shot. I want to see One bust up, bust up. Wait, wait, wait. I'm trying to bust, I'm trying to bust. One shot, bust, one shot, bust. Gotta get Askies here, guys. Yeah. We're good. And point out, point out, out of what the fuck do you have to do? I spawn P3, I spawn P3, guys. One into the pusher. One into the car, one into the car. There's two of them. There's two of them. I spawn out, we're good. I'm cutting off gold. I'm cutting off gold. There's three street, three R street, three R street. We don't have that. Watch it, watch it. He's going, go, buddy. He's crossing, go, buddy. He's crossing, go, buddy. Yo, go, buddy. No, 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 no. Bust up, bust up, bust up, bust up. Go, go, go. Push it, push it, push it. Side laundry, side laundry, side laundry. Side laundry, side laundry. Side laundry, side laundry. Alright, but I'm just triggering me. I see one shot. I'm trusting you, I'm trusting you, I'm helping you. He might come back. I got him, I got him. Well done. I got one, I got one three. One go, last go. I'm still blocking eskies, I'm still blocking eskies. Hey, just watch it, just watch it. You're still globe. That was a recon globe. Yeah. Don't try, don't try. I need it, I need it. Hey, right, globe, right, globe. I'm watching lobby. I'm playing so, do you see it? I saw it. Save, save, save. I'm just playing. Let's fight over here. Yo, block hard, block hard. Fuck. We're not, we're not. He's easy. Fuck, we're not, we're not. What's that? What's that? What's that? Bro, I'm backing up, backing up, backing up. I'm blocking. 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 Uh, that, listen, I mentioned this last time when we listened to Flores comms, that big wake, right, that's whispering the comms, I mean, I yeah. don't, I don't mind it, I mean, it just sounds, it just sounds hilarious, like, just to hear him, hear him whisper, but they were very calm, um, you, you he's, I not, don't, he's not the only player that does it, we know the accuracy does it in matches, like, there are a couple other guys that don't, they, like, um, they don't, they, like, approaches, like, not to make it too hectic with their call-outs, they're just trying to be calm and sort of project that, uh -huh. that confidence, but I agree, it's a little, like, when other guys on the, the team are a little louder and more like aggressive with their call, it's a little off-putting sometimes. Uh huh. Uh, Florida, they're able to to hold down to the the thing is, is 100 Thieves built themselves a good lead, but Florida was able to chain on the second rotation, the P1 and P2 hills to get them back into the game. And then again, coming into this P3, Florida somehow are able to come on in and get some kills and flip these guys out from 100 Thieves. I mean. People from 100 Thieves just can't die here. They can't. Why do you yeah. keep going back? Fucking keep playing well, it, Ben, before I'm, I'm I lose trying, my fucking I'm trying, mind. I'm trying to set the situation. So, Kyler, aka Hook, dies with 20 seconds. So, he spawns in the back. Yeah. And then, number four here, Venom dies with about He's 10, too far pushed up. He's too far pushed up. Eight seconds here. He really can't die here because you're not going to be able to Listen, he get, he gets a kill, but it just doesn't matter. He's too yeah. far pushed up. Listen, I don't. you can't push up there until you know 100% that if you die, you're going to spawn in the back. He pushes up too early. He's by himself, so nobody's there to even help him out. He ends up getting a kill, but he falls, and then, you know, he spawns out. And now because of that, there's gaps just open on the map. Florida's able to just swarm on in. They end up flipping out the spawns, so Florida gets some back spawns. And, and regardless, whether Florida's getting time or not, they're making it mixy. Like, this should have been a hold from 100 Thieves. Like, this should have been a big hold to really to, to really just build up like 50 or 60 yeah, points they, they again, would have yeah. been up by a lot. So Florida, they're able to just make things mixy. I think it was just a little misplay there by Venom. Um, just on rotation, you got to make sure you're playing tight with your team. You have to, because a little mistake like that can really, really cost you, and that's exactly what happened. So Florida, they're able to make it mixy. They bring the game back. Huge plays coming out of Neptune as he's able to pick up this scrap time. And then we have a problem going into this street hill, Ben. They let a yeah. guy waltz out of bank like it was nothing. Yeah, so Kenny actually, so when you and I watched this, we didn't catch this the first time, and I just saw it now. Like, and I'll, I'll rewind it a little bit. So Kenny actually does have bus pushed out here. He is playing. He gets in a gunfight. I think he's weak. That's why he ducks over here to try and regen and like wait for his team. Uh -huh. But because his team is so slow to come off a of spawn, and he ends up holding this, like he lets them just slide out of bank here, 
which is which is I think not the right play. Like I think you got to keep Bush pushed out and make this difficult. Keep for it pushed out. You need yeah. to push it out. You have to because then you you just pin yourself. All yeah. all you're doing is just pinning yourself in the corner. You're letting you're letting Florida come out, slide out, and just camera you and gun you. And at that point, the whole the whole hill falls apart. They had all the time in the world to push up Buzz, play corners. Throw some trophies down. Be annoying. Work a crossfire. They could have worked some crossfires there. They could have had a god set up. They could have had a god set up, but instead they end up turtling a little bit. They sit back on that street. Kenny's pushed up in that corner, but granted, it's it's not that bad of a corner, but you just have no control. You're giving Florida the most important part of the hill, the bus, the fucking bus. So, you know, I, I had a lot of problems with, with the New York team on this hill, and we, we used to complain. I used to complain about it a, a lot because we didn't do it. We never pushed out bus. And they just did it right there. And at this point in the game, I mean, they can't make mistakes like that. That's two mistakes now. Um, two very big mistakes. Where 100 Thieves, they, they, they're they disciplined, Ben. And they rotate, but then they don't execute. They're making little mistakes. They're doing the hard part, and they're not doing the easy part. And and that's the problem that I saw in this fourth map, for sure. Well, well let's talk about another mistake here, right? So, I'll uh, rewind it a little bit from here. They end up rotating early. It's a little mixy. There's split spawns coming in. It's... It's a little chaotic, but they're able to get half full control. A third guy, number four, is going to spawn up here, Venom. But if you, if I had played this a little bit farther back, they never had any street control. Like, mm -hmm. like Florida was pushed out three here for a good 20, 30 seconds. And no point to any three players on this team decide to make sure and check to make sure that no one's hitting a long route. Now, I think they end up actually kind of netting okay out of the situation. And they get away with a little bit, but it could have been worse. They could have gotten completely flat. Actually, I think they do get flipped out. Um, I think they're able to flip back out. They get some P1 time here. And they're able to push and flip back out. Um, but it's just a little mistakes to not make this map easy. They had a lead at this point. Now they're down 20 seconds. Florida's at that 208 mark, so they can win off a of P2 like in P or P3. Like it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. So the onus is on these to try and chain these next two hills. Now they do end up getting a lot of P2 time. Uh, as Florida's burn streaks, but we'll watch sort of this rotation situation. Florida's like, okay, we'll give you P2 time. We'll set up. We'll play for P3. Discipline. And ultimately, nothing really nets from this Steve's push here, and Florida's able to win. Florida definitely chalked the streaks a little bit. Neptune definitely pre-fired his streak a little bit. Um, definitely had a lot of energy. Maybe he was too cracked. He couldn't calm himself down, but... Um, I'm going to be honest. I, I like the way Florida plays the end of this game. They stay disciplined. They don't do anything crazy. They don't try and push scrap or, or panic at all. They make sure that they rotate. They make sure they get into their setup. They play tight. They have crossfires. They have every lane watched. And they have streaks to work with. So at the very end, they get in this hill. I would like to see Skies even, even save onto that. I mean, there's really no point to even use it. I mean, just save it as like a backbone just in case everything falls. But um, whatever. In Florida, they're able to close it out. Um, good plays out of them, honestly. Venom here. He gets in behind at the end. He stops shooting at Awakening. Maybe could have made a play. Um, well, I, I think he also gets some unlucky hit reg here. I think he just gets. Oh, I feel like some of these shots. Unlucky should hit reg. What do you mean unlucky hit reg? He shot. He did. He didn't. He didn't. Re like those shots were kind of borderline 50-50 there what they were hitting or not. But ultimately, if he'd gotten that kill, that would have been huge. He he would have had them set up for back spawns. Instead, now it's basically a pitch from all side situation with eight seconds left, and they're not able to get it. Mm -hmm. And then Florida, a really big victory for them. Huge. They really need these points. They need to start coming up the standings so they're not kind of flirting around that seventh, eighth spot. They're now going to have a very interesting matchup with New York. We'll talk about that. And for Thieves, uh, their next step is they're now in losers. They're going to end up playing the, the winner of the Minnesota and London match. I think mm -hmm. Thieves is in an interesting position to make a run here, but they will, if they win that match, I believe the, the brackets flip. I think Spencer Peterson, a.k.a. Spencer Spence, was on the show during the last major and let us know that for losers round four, uh, and the winner's sides flip. So what that means is since uh, Minnesota Thieves and Leonard on the bottom side of losers, they would end up playing the loser from the top side of winner's semi. So that would be either FaZe or Toronto. So it's going to be a tough road for Thieves here if they want to try and get in the top four. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of people tell me to look at the, the Reddit post with, with Venom. I'm going to pull it up right now. Apparently he put six bullets into him and he just didn't die. So uh, we're going to slow it down and see what happened here. I mean, it looked like a lot of bullets. What do you think, Ben? Let's see. I mean, it, it's borderline. Looks like he might have missed One, a few, but like another two, day you get that reg. Three, uh, I don't know, guys. I don't know. I don't know. He stopped shooting. Uh, all I see is him. He stopped shooting. He gave up on a kill. He probably thought that he killed him, and he let it slip. Now, there could have been some bullet reg issues or, or what, but he should still close out that kill. I think he should close it out. Now, listen. 
Granted, I don't know why Florida even gave up the back. Did they not think that somebody could come back from back there? Because they literally just chalked it up and they just gave up the spawn. So I don't really know what the heck was going on right there when he gave up the back. But it is what it is. People are saying five. Uh, listen, uh, five. I don't know. I don't know if he missed or not. I, I really don't know. I, I have no idea, guys. But at the end of the day, he he was able to get that spawn in the back and, and Florida gave it up. He could have made a play. Um, but, but Florida end up clutching up and, and Awakening gets a big kill on Venom towards the end right there to just kind of turn and burn on Venom. So I don't really know what the fuck happened, guys. I see a lot of people saying he shot five, he shot three. Listen, I don't know. I don't fucking know. But Ben, we have amazing matches tomorrow, bro. The matches yeah, tomorrow are going yeah. to be fucking lit, guys. I mean, we have some really, really good matches. A lot of top teams and they're only going to get better as the weekend goes on. Today was a super long day. Um, I definitely didn't expect it to go this late. We obviously had some technical difficulties, but Ben, if you can just bring up the the leader or the the schedule for tomorrow, and we'll and we'll break down the matches. On broadcast, but I got a tweet for you if you want to pull that up. That yeah, has a schedule. sure. I'll pull up the tweet. Here you go, guys. We got the tweet. So tomorrow we're kicking things off at 3 p.m. Eastern with Minnesota Rocker going up against London Royal Ravens. Up next, we got Optic Chicago against Los Angeles Gorillas. Toronto Ultra versus Atlanta Phase. What, like, my own, bro. That's going to be a fucking good one, Ben. And then we got New York Subliners going up against Florida. These are matches, man. Now, these That's are fucking matches. We got a good set tomorrow, guys. Um, So we're going to start off with some predictions, and then we'll answer some questions, and we'll call it a fucking day. What do you think, uh, Ben? So we're going to start with the first match. And, Tom, this might be a surprise, but I actually got London 3-2 in this. I really I like the momentum. Surprise. They look good. Well, Maybe some casual fans who, who haven't been following the London guys in the last week or so may not realize that this team's on a really good fan of form right now. I really like the way they're playing a respawn. It's been a real struggle for Minnesota. Um, they've had a real difficulty in the respawns recently with their team. I would really love to see some of the um, inconsistent players in Minnesota right now, especially accuracy, kind of step up uh, for this run through losers for them. But I got London taking a map five. Yeah, I think it's going map five. I agree with you there. I'll go the other way. I'll go Minnesota three two, um, just so you know we got a little bit of a battle. But I also think Minnesota Rocker can can win this. I think it's gonna come down to who shows up to play tomorrow. Like like we said, a lot of these teams, man, it's just it's just based on the day. It's based yeah. on the day and who's gonna come out to play and, and who's gonna clutch up, who's gonna make the l less mistakes. So that's gonna be a good one. And then we go into Optic Chicago going up against Los Angeles Gorillas. Now, Gorillas look good today. They did. Granted, they are playing Seattle, and they have been shit. But I think I'm going to go with Optic Chicago here, man. I think they're going to close this one out. I mean, Los Angeles Gorillas, they, they look good today, but I think Optic's going to close this one out 3-1. to one. I think they're going to come out swinging tomorrow. Um, you know, you heard Scum talking about it, how they, you know, people only see what they've been doing in the matches because they haven't been streaming scrims, yep. and they've been playing really well in, in scrims. Um, there's other arguments to that, like pros are saying, well, yeah, it's because they scream on this host and that host and blah, blah. Listen, I don't really know. But all I know is Optic's a great team, and I think they're going to come out and close the series. Um, that's just my prediction. I'm going to go with 3-2. I can see Los Angeles. Now, nah, we'll go 3-1. I can see Los Angeles Gorillas taking it, obviously, but this is just my prediction. This is just what I'm feeling, and I think Optic's going to come out to play tomorrow, Ben. But what do you think? I think it's going to be a grinder series. LAG's got some momentum. I think Optic's going to take it in the game five. I think it'll be a, a, a full map fiver. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I just I just think we, we can't. We got to give LAG some respect. They've been we playing do. well recently. They've been playing well. Optic have had difficulty. Please, for the love of God, if you're Optic, do not let Raid Control get through in this series. I will lose absolute composure tomorrow. The only uh, thing that scares me with Optic... That is not going to be a good map for you. Go ahead. The, the only thing that, that scares me with Optic is, like, yeah. LAG, I feel like their teamwork is, like, on point right now. Like, I feel like they actually are playing well yeah. as a team. Yeah, they're, and they're starting been, around the farm. And, and that's been Optic's problem, is playing as a team and, and working together and working off one another. So, you look at all the talent that Optic has on the team, and individually, on paper, you think, wow, Optic's a better team. But, hey... They come. They gotta come to play tomorrow. And make sure they're working off one another because if they're not, they're gonna lose. They're gonna lose. Well, so. I, I think for Optic, they've got the skill to beat LAG, but they gotta ask themselves one basic question every time they spawn as a team: What is our plan? If they answer that question as a team, no and fucking make the right shit, play, Ben. No, I, you say that, but it when you watch them play recently, it doesn't seem like You're right. as a team they're going through that step. They're making a lot of individual plays. There's not a lot of bait and switching and a teamwork going I on. I agree. They should be able to beat LAG on pure skill alone. But right now, the teamwork is not there, and they need to start going back to basics on it and start generating some momentum as a team. 
uh, to make this run because it would really suck if they lost this match. I don't think they're going to, um, but they need to start rounding into form here. Or they're going to lose ground on a lot of teams and slip from their position in the standings. Yeah, somebody said that Chad Zuma always says the same thing about Optic, always has them winning. Well, that's just false because last week I said 100 Thieves was going to beat Optic, and that's exactly what happened. So I say it how it is, um, and I think Optic is going to win this one tomorrow. Uh, so I'm really excited to see these guys play. And l like you said, Ben, I mean, they should be able to win on indiv individual talent alone. But yeah. we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens because I, I agree they can. But we know that uh, uh, somebody said zero skill gap in this game. That's fucking fugaze. Um, I, I, it really worries me when teams are going to come out to play as a team because I think that's what's going to separate a lot of these teams. So hopefully Optics got their stuff together for tomorrow. But I'm excited for that one and we're going to talk about it. Um, but then we got Toronto Ultra going up against Atlanta FaZe. And these are the top two teams right now, without a doubt. Maybe you could throw New York in there, right? The top three. You got uh, Ultra, FaZe, New York. I, th that would definitely be my top three as of now. Um, but I think uh, this is going to be a good one, Ben. I personally have FaZe taking down Toronto tomorrow. I think they are. I think they're going to do it. I think it's going to be 3-1. Uh, no, we'll go 3-2. It's going to go down to the wire. I can see it going to game five. But I think FaZe is going to clutch up. They just look like they're on point right now. They look like the, the FaZe in the beginning of the year where nobody can fucking touch them. They just look scary. They look like they're on point. Um, and, I, and I know those guys have been working really hard over there in that camp. So I'm curious to see how it goes. But I got FaZe 3-2. Who do you got? So a couple of things I'm interested in. One is um, some key questions. Because I, I got FaZe winning in Game 5. But I got a couple of key questions in this series. I'll see when we're looking at the vetoes. First off, I'm very curious what hard point that Toronto is going to ban against FaZe. Um, because you have to basically get rid of probably Garrison or Moscow against FaZe. And they played both those maps recently against FaZe. Once in the finals. Once in winner's finals. And didn't win either. So I'm curious what the approach is from Toronto on that. Second is I'm curious the order of the SNDs. Uh, I assume FaZe is probably not going to scrub with them on SND raid. So I'm thinking we're probably going to get like a checkmate and an express as a two SND map. So I'm curious the order. I think right now FaZe's SND looks really good. And when they're in that level, they're really hard to beat. I think Toronto's also in really good form. I think this will be a battle. Um, I think ultimately in that situation, it comes down to who I think on paper is probably the better SD team. I think it's phased, but I think this series will be really close. I could see like a round 10, round 11 map it's gonna be a search. good one. An absolute banger heater of a match. Oh, yeah. All of them. All of these guys. All of these guys. Yeah. This is going to be a great day, Cod. Great day, Cod. I'm really excited. And then we go into the last series. New York Subliners going up against the Florida Mutineers. You already know I got my guys right. And not just because they're my guys. But the guys over at New York have been coming to play. And I feel like they're all hitting form. Max hitting form. He was arguably arguably um, the MVP in, in last week or this last past week that they just played. You have Hydra who's hitting form. A lot of people, he was in the scuff team in a week. He was showing what he could do. You know what Asim's going to bring to the table. No matter what his stats say, he's always a hard player to play against. Super annoying. And then you have Clay, a veteran at the AR role looking over all these young guns, trying to lead the way, trying to lead the fucking pack. Um, and it's just a great team. A great team on paper. They've been playing really well. Um, I think they're going to come out and, and, do, and take care of business against Florida tomorrow. I, go, I got a 3-0 or a 3-1. Um, but, it, you know, if Florida, with the potential and the ceiling that they can hit, they come out to play tomorrow, it could be a really, really good series. But, Ben, I'm curious to see who you got. I got New York 3-2. I think Florida low-key has been actually on a really good stretch here now on winning three games in a row. Really, it should have been five. They mega tossed that series against Paris. Uh, outside of the Ultra Series, like, I feel like – they legitimately could have won all the other series they had played so far. Mm. Um, I really like the form that New York's been in, topping their group. Uh, I think the reason I'm giving New York the edge is just we saw a great series from Neptune today, but we have all year struggled up until recently to see Florida win like back-to-back -back matches. So can they get on a four-game winning streak? I'm thinking, no, I think New York's just going to be the better team. But I would not be shocked if Florida loses this series and then makes a run. And it's possibly either that, that finishes top four or top three at this event. Yeah, no, it definitely got some great matches. Regardless, man, I cannot wait to, to turn on the show uh, tomorrow and just talk about these matches because I don't know what the hell is going to happen. I just feel like something's going to hit the fucking fan. So we'll see how it all goes. Hush up. I appreciate the big five kid. I think but, legitimately, Tom, I think legitimately all this series can go to game five. They really like, can. Not, they really not like can. Bullshitting. Like, I no, it's not. Think, I, think, I think these are all really good matchups on paper. Now, we can all just end up with three O's and you and I will look really stupid. But I think this ended up being like a really good set of day two matches with teams that are very intriguing matchups against each other. Mm -hmm. And also, I think legitimately, like, 
none of these teams on paper outside of Florida, like historically this year, but recently they've been good. Like they're all really good S and D teams. Yep, hundred percent. Actually, except for except for actually, Optic's been a good S and S and D team outside the phase series. Mm -hmm. I just can't yeah. wait. I can't wait. We're gonna have a great one tomorrow. But guys, let's end the show with some questions. Drop your questions in the chat, and Ben and I will do the best we can to pull out the best ones that we see. And uh, we'll answer a few of them for you guys. The one question that I saw, what are your thoughts on the next COD title being potentially delayed? And will be and will there be a COD re replayed to fill the gap? I don't know. It, okay. What I'll say on this is we've seen rumors like this come up about Call of Duty games. And then, you know, like they don't end up being true. So I exercise a lot of caution. We're starting to get towards E3 season. So sometimes there's some funny business that goes on with these leaks. Uh, we'll wait to see what what happens. My thing though is if we do end up with uh, you know Modern Warfare 2 remastered, which is the hot rumor right now, I kind of would like to see us have another year of Cold War. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. I wouldn't mind seeing it. Uh, I, I like the game. I, I really do. I, you know me. I, I would love to see a new COD. But I mean, if if it is what it is, and we have to play another game, we might as well just play the one that we've been playing. I mean, just yeah. keep it going. Um, at the end of the day, I really don't know what's gonna happen, guys. So we'll just have to wait and see. Um, but another question I see, somebody's dropped, what's going to happen with the flank when it goes to on land? I see a lot of people talking about it. Um, I saw it on Reddit. Question. A lot of people are confused. I'm personally working on getting the the flank. I'm personally, I want to go to the events and, and figure out how to stream from there, which I, I'm pretty sure I know how to I, do. I don't, think, I don't think we're going to be able to do it. So my guess is for the fourth major, they're probably like no fans and probably very limited personnel on site. So for major four, I think... You and I will probably do a regular like remote show. Mm -hmm. Maybe later in the season we can. But yeah, I got some. I actually got someone who might want to produce. I have uh, Tom, one of my coworkers, who actually like produced the CWL in the later years, wants to produce the land version of our show. So I mean, that'll we'll, be great. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it all, offline. But my my boy Ethan Spencer, when I was at his house a couple of days ago, expressed interest in uh, producing our land version of the show. So we're thinking about it, guys. We're trying to think about the equipment, but there's like a lot of things that go into lighting. Like we don't want to make it look terrible. We want to have a professional setup. Uh, it's gonna take some work on our end, but we'll we'll uh, we'll get that Listen, going for you guys. Listen, all I could tell you guys is I've definitely been thinking about it. Um, I'm, yeah. I've even been talking to my designer about making me something so that when we're say we're sitting on a couch or something with microphones, we have a whole layout for it and everything. We've already talked about it on things we're gonna do. Worst comes to worst, I'll, I'll download Streamlabs on my laptop. We'll bring it to the event. We'll plug in some mics and we'll sit on the couch and have a good conversation. Um, the production might be a little fucking shit off the rip because we are going to be new to it, but we'll see how it goes. And at that's the end, of the, trying to get a, that's why I'm trying to get a producer, so it's it's good off yeah, the yeah. bat. And, we'll and, and, and then at the end of the day, uh, you know, with this upcoming major, I mean, I don't even know if Ben and I are even going to be there, so we'll still be doing the show just from home like we've been doing. Um, in terms of guests and getting pro players on, I mean, they're just going to be out of town, so I don't know if anybody's going to be able to come on. We'll get other guests in other ways. Um, we'll get other people to come on and, and kind of talk. But for the most part, it might just be Ben and I, um, yep. which is completely fine. Because I think Ben and I, if it's just us two on the show, I think it's super underrated. Um, I, I actually Agreed. I actually enjoy the show when it's just me and Ben. Um, now, that can be biased, but that's how the show started and everybody loved it. And then we started bringing more and more guests on. And people yep. always want to see guests, which is cool. I love guests. But I think we need to have a balance. I don't think we should just fill up the call with a shit ton of people all the time. Now, granted, sometimes we will. Um, it just depends on the vibe. Um, yep. But we, we listen. We'll, we'll we'll continue to bring Zinni in and Parasite and all the people that you love. But at the end of the day, we started the show just Ben and I. And it, you know, listen, uh, listen. I'm just gassing us up, Ben. I fucking love when we do the show just me and you because we could talk yep. a little bit more and uh, we don't get interrupted. But I mean, at the same time, I love love having guests on. Um, and I'd well, say that all the time. I mean, I I even said Zinni said I had my stream on today and I didn't even care. I said join up. It doesn't matter. Um, because he felt bad with his stream on joining the show. I didn't give a fuck. But listen. If he wants to come on, they can come on. Anybody who ever wants to come on the show, please just tweet me. Let me know. I've been reaching out to people, getting people on. Um, I definitely want to look into getting maybe Adam Apicella, maybe Hector, Nate Shot, some of the bigger guys like behind Mike the scenes. Castro. Uh -huh. We want to, we want to like you and I have talked about too. Like we're not going to stop this show when the off season starts. Mm -hmm. I think Tom and I will move to like one or two episodes a week, and we'll 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 listen. We'll get pro players on or in t weird team situations. Talk about the season one. Maybe the teams are thinking about going to during roster mania. Uh -huh. We'll break down all the roster mania stuff. And it's a good time to get some of these owners and associated personnel in the scene, associated personnel, uh, some of like TST and banks, like guys like that. And let's have 
a, a conversation on their history in this scene, where they see things going, and take some questions from you guys. So sneak preview of what we're planning for once the season ends here uh, during the summer. Yep, and then uh, we got a couple more questions. Somebody said, uh, well, somebody uh, donated me 500 bits. It was Selects, and he said, what happens if Optic loses to LAG tomorrow? Um, we'll, we'll talk about that tomorrow. We'll see how they play when they we'll come out tomorrow, and then we'll, we'll hold on our opinions for that. Um, but we'll see, because I think Optic's going to win tomorrow. But Selects, we'll see when what happens. What, uh, Tom, let's, I saw someone bring this question up, and we didn't talk about it on the show. We'll so end it on this one. Thieves did a pre, like a pre, you know, like the Optic does their pre-show thing. Thieves did a pre-show thing. Uh-huh. And Kenny was talking about the Optic team, and he was pretty blunt. He basically said that he thinks that a couple of the guys in the team are kill whoring, uh, and that ultimately the teamwork's just not there. He said that Envoy's basically being put in a position where he's the only one really hitting routes, and everybody else is kind of spawning up playing kills. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts on, on that statement from him? Do you think he's spot on? Do you think he was a little bit out of line uh... for being such blunt about another team? I mean, it may look like they're kill horn because they're not playing as a team. So maybe people are just making solo plays or people are just playing for themselves. But um, I, I definitely could see people on that team playing for stats. Not not really playing for stats, but just maybe playing a little bit selfish because, you know, they don't want to be that person that gets kicked off. Let's be honest. I mean, if the team continues to fall, nobody wants to go. But at the end of the day, if they all come together and they talk and say, hey, if we play as a team, we're all going to look good and we're all going to play good. Which players like that, like Scump and Formal, who have won so many events, they know this. Now it's like, you know, you got Dashy and Envoy. Make sure the team comes together. And, and Troy over there, you got Sender, should be trying to get these guys together and just trying to build a good culture yep. to where these guys are going into the game. And they're just working off one, one another. And they're just working as a team. You can't win by yourself. You can't. Yep. You can't. And at the end of the day, if you're playing as a team, everybody's going to look good. It, the game's going to come to you. Everything's going to be so easy. You're not going to have to win any hard gunfights. All the kills are going to be coming to you. Um, so it's just about them going back to the drawing board, making sure they're they're sharpening up their gameplays. Yep. And we'll see what happens when they come out tomorrow. But Ben, I think yep. we can end it there. But good I want to see you hit an absolute putt to end this let's, one, let's Ben. You already know the vibes, ladies and gentlemen. Can we get a win in the chat? I want to get some energy. I want Ben to sink this one. Ben! Your camera's all fucking fugues. Oh, no, it's not. It's just me. It's the production team coming out of Zuma. But it's okay. We can get a Luma in the chat. I'm going to make it bigger. I want to see Ben sink this putt. Let's see what it can do. He's stepping up to the green, ladies and gentlemen. We got Mitch Mori in the chat. Drop it a Wuma. Drop it a win. Ben, he's going to step up to the green. Let's see what he can do here. He's going to connect, and he does not sink. Oh, he does sink it. He does. He sinks the putt, and Ben J. Nassim comes out on top, ladies and gentlemen. Absolute bomb, Tom. No way, Ben. You're the fucking GOAT, bro. Big plays coming out of Ben J. Nassim. Can we drop a win in the chat, ladies and gentlemen? Love ben, that. I always yeah. love when you sink that fucking thing to end the show. Listen, it's just, I'm, I'm, it's I'm just a cherry to... on top. It's a cherry on top, Ben. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I played uh, nine holes yesterday with uh, a friend and played well. I'm playing on Sunday, actually, me, Nameless, and uh, a few other peeps. And I'm actually getting my, I'm going for a club thing tomorrow, Tom, so I'm excited. Nice, nice. I like I'm gonna, that, Ben. But finally, you know that, that all that money you sent me, and shout out you for that, obviously, for my Appreciate participation you, bro. More, show, more where that's coming from. I more where that. that's coming from. We'll, but uh, I'm going to go uh, probably drop a couple of racks on golf clubs tomorrow, so we'll see how that goes. I like that, man. I like that. Go do what you got to do. And yeah. uh, once again, Ben. It's always a pleasure. Thank you for coming uh, on. Thanks you for having me on as always, Tom. Excited to always come on. And talk yeah, man. Uh, great show today. Great fucking show today, guys. What do you think? W L. I think this is a W. We hit over seven thousand viewers today in the show. Uh, we had a couple people come on. We talked about a lot. We gave our predictions, and we'll be back tomorrow to give uh to give our thoughts. So make sure you guys follow the stream. Make sure make sure you guys tune in. And as always, I'm gonna keep streaming after this show, and we're gonna play some games, guys. So make sure if you wanna watch me play GTA or COD or tune into some eights. You stay tuned because uh, I'll be back. But thank you guys, man. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good day. Have a good day.